All right, all right. Hey guys, welcome back to the underground. This is Interactive Chat Volume 62. Only six more to go to hit our next milestone. My name is AJ. What is up, guys? This is, of course, our weekly every single thursday solo man podcast where we talk about everything news reviews announcements trailers new games updates <laughs> sales all the things psvr2 related and i hope you guys have had a wonderful week i've missed you i have because last week i was out in uh at pax east uh for the game cap meetup of 2024 we had me Brian uh, from with PSVR2 Without Parole, Wes from Virtual Strangers, Miles Dyer. Of course, we're all kind of part of the Without Parole crew, but and a bunch of game cats and a bunch of developers, and it was awesome, man. Uh, it was such a good time. Um, actually, uh, if you missed it, we do it. We did a recap on Monday over on PSVR2 Without Parole. Make sure you go over there, subscribe, and watch the uh, Monday's PAX recap. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and we have a bunch of great stories, and there's more. Uh, Brian is actually currently rendering, at this time, uh, our games cast Not Live, uh, in which uh, we did a games cast in front of a live audience at there. We had a, we had a big turnout, man. We had like 30 people there. Uh, it was awesome, flying in from all over the world, from the Netherlands, from, from Europe, from uh south korea <laughs> um it was awesome man it, it was a wonderful experience but now it is time and of course we came back and we're hitting the ground running because geez man couldn't even get a moment to rest and it's just like game after game after update after update there's a lot going on in psvr2 land right now and today we are going to go ahead and break it all down for you man hell sweeper launched today everybody Hell Sweeper's finally here. Woo! So I did get a chance to play that. We're going to uh, talk about my first impressions on that one. Um, I got a couple delays to talk about. Uh, this is going to be a very f uh, dynamic foveated rendering, a.k.a. eye-tracked foveate foveated rendering supported episode <laughs> because there's loads of uh, support for DFR and 90 native frames per second coming in hot uh, that we got to cover. We're going to cover all the little games, one or two you may not have been aware of. And then, of course, there is a new metal game that is on the horizon that I can't wait. Uh, I'm so excited. I'll talk about it all very shortly. But this is, of course, interactive chat. Uh, where I like to interact with you guys and say what's up to Silver Nexus, my dude. Thank you so much for welcoming me back. It's good to be back, my friend. I missed you, homie. Uh, Twitcher, the deuce juice. Game Cat says whoop. Uh, Stingray X says metal. That's right. We got a lot of metal to talk about today, and I love it. Uh, Spooky Yuki, time to play VR. Bambino Ramos, Scott, the PSVR game cat for life. Blue Drew, the underground game cat, elite name squad in the house. Vargosoft, uh, Fofi, what's up, man? Uh, good to see you, dude. Uh, Super Galaxy God Star, Headbite, Nick Mulo. Um, <laughs> I'm still tired. I, I'm definitely still tired from the meetup as well, for sure. I, I've about shaken it off, though. We're good. We're good. We've always lived in the Castle Mary Cat. Uh, Nalus Ryan already coming in hot with the donation. Thank you so much, man. It says Metal Game Hype. That's right, my metal brother. Uh, it was so good to meet you out there, man, and listen to your metal tunes. Uh, it sounded good. Sounded good. You guys were rocking it, man. I liked it. What up, DJ Dirty Yellow? Uh, I also like to thank, before we get the show started, these lovely people that go to patreon.com slash PSVR Underground and support me on there. Uh, I have right now an exclusive uh, interview with the legendary Tales developer, BJ Kang, uh, and founder of Urban Wolf Games. Just a short little sweet interview. Uh, it's unedited. I do plan on editing that and putting it up on the channel uh, with a little bit more polish and everything. Um, but it was a really fun time, uh, and he was a really cool dude. And um, uh, also, Brian did have an interview with him as well. And he answered a lot of my questions that I asked him on Brian's interview. So Brian's going to actually be posting that to his Patreon as well. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, shout out to everybody who supports us down here, who supports us uh, by watching, who supports us by hanging out, having a good time, being good to one another, enjoying their 
awesome VR headsets. And uh, of course, uh, to everyone who donates in the live chat here today. So I appreciate each and every one of you. I couldn't do this without your support. You mean the world to me and us. And I love this community so goddamn much. Um, all right, guys. But we have a bunch of... A bunch, bunch, bunch of news to talk about today. We've got some new games announced. Uh, a couple, a, a huge update, which will be one of the headliners of the show. Um, Overdark comes out tomorrow, which we'll be touching base on that. And then, of course, we're going to go through the sale like we do as always uh, and give the thumbs up, thumbs down. There's a huge, another awesome spring sale going on. Um, <laughs> Scott, the PSVR kick. Oh, you're funny, man. Um, we uh, we will we'll be going down and breaking down the sale at the end of the show as we usually do. Um, Lara May, thank you so much for the 65 Securos. I appreciate your support. I hear you're talking to Julia right now. <laughs> she says she says you're really cool. So welcome to the community, and uh, you couldn't be in a better place to enjoy your PSVR2 headset. Uh, it's the best place ever. And hello, and thank you for the uh, for the message of the awesome stream. Appreciate you. I uh, really, really do. Um, all right. So, guys, uh, we've got a lot to get into today. So let's go ahead and break it all down. We're going to actually starting off with an update to a game. No, not that one, but another big, big update. And that is, of course, one of my favorite games of all time, No Man's Sky, baby. Let's go. Um, so th there's not really a lot, a ton to cover on here. I do have some footage for you uh, right here to the left. If you look to the left, there's some footage for you. Uh, and uh, so I got to check out this update uh, with this No Man's Sky update. The two big significant things to me, as you can see here, is that they have completely revamped the uh, space stations. And let me just say, guys, wow, wow. Um, I, in all this footage you'll see here, uh, I'm basically just quickly warping uh, from system to system and checking out the new look of the new space stations. And they are sweet, man. And I'll tell you what my new favorite thing in No Man's Sky is doing is basically just cruising around and, and hovering around these stations because the way they look the presentation of them the the way that the whole space atmosphere looks uh is absolutely breathtaking man um these space stations look absolutely incredible and uh it was it was really really awesome um but that's actually not the only thing so if you want to jump in to see what this update is all about if you uh, are curious about it i highly recommend checking out the space stations first and foremost just go around to different systems and just hover around them you'll see i'm about to run into another one um and uh and yeah man they are absolutely stunning and they are huge in first person um here's another one i'm coming up on uh real quick but Man, they are uh, they are a sight to behold for sure. Um, they've also redesigned the interiors of them. Uh, but the other part of this update, of course, is that they've added ship customization because <laughs> No Man's Sky won't let Starfield have any good things. Uh, no, they uh, they actually ever since Starfield came out, a lot of people were talking about you know how great it is to have um, uh, ship customization things like that. And that's been a, something that people have asked about for a long time as well. So really, really cool that they've added this as well. Um, and uh, yeah, here's another look at one of the space stations. Unfortunately, I got kind of attacked here, so I had to bail and, and go into the station. But man, just sitting out in space and, and admiring the beauty of these things is pretty remarkable. It's It's such a beautiful, sharp, clear game now that it's just breathtaking here's a look at the new interiors as well and it does change depending on system depending on economy all sorts of things man um it is uh super cool but uh but yeah man so there's a bunch of other little things well, there's a bunch of other little things with this update um i uh I, for one, like, I like the content updates of, like, having new things to do and missions and things like that. Um, but it was 
but this definitely piqued my interest and enough reason to jump back into no man's sky i've been playing i'm still playing my first save from 2016 so it was really nice to have something new uh to jump in anytime i get a chance and just admire the beauty i love uh stargazing uh no man's sky a bunch and just soaking up the landscapes the views uh the beautiful scenery exploring the f the different discovering the different flora and fauna there is there's if you love exploration this is in my opinion the best exploration game of all time uh and it also just has like a bunch of a bunch of a stuff to to do and and whatever you want really it's it's literally an open universe sandbox so it's incredibly immersive and incredibly fun um but super cool update man uh but we have a lot more to talk about here of course but before we do i'm gonna let this video keep playing so you can get another look at another space station and while that's running uh kill artist won the dream weaver game cat uh says finally played hell sweeper today after having it since having it since it first went on sale so far it's pretty cool <laughs> yeah man uh, i'm definitely going to be sharing some thoughts we're gonna we're gonna kind of break down uh all that stuff in uh in hell in uh hell sweeper for sure um i think it's so far really really cool spoiler alert um but we will get to that uh very very soon but first where are my metal folks at i know we got a lot of metal heads in the chat today uh because uh, recently announced was a game. Now it's interesting. This is a game that it came out uh, flat screen first. And even though it's flat screen, and even though all of our community mostly plays VR, I got DM after DM after DM saying, dude, you have to play this game. I don't care if it's not VR, you have to play this. And that is of course a game, coincidentally enough, has now been announced for VR, and that is Metal Hellsinger VR. Dude, dude, <laughs> Doomsaber. I'm so freaking excited about this, as some of you might or might not know. I'm kind of a metalhead. I really love metal music. Uh, it just gets me super pumped up. And uh, yeah, so this is a metal rhythm shooter game. Uh, it's kind of like doom with uh rhythm game elements which is wonderful timing as well i like all the horns in the chat by the way um but uh this is basically like doom with a rhythm game element to it uh has a full list as you can see of a bunch of popular metal uh musicians everybody from like surge tank in uh to to members of like gin uh Ginger, I think that, yeah, um, and like a bunch of other things. Uh, Trivium, the Matt Heafy guy. Um, a lot of really, really popular uh, metal bands here. Um, but guys, this is uh, this has an interesting story behind it. Um, oh, I totally accidentally skipped my first story, by the way, but we'll get, we'll get to it in a second. Um, let's take a look real quick at uh, what they have to say over on the website here um for those who don't know uh the gameplay says strike terror into the hearts of demons and devils as you fight your way through eight hells metal hellsinger is a rhythm first person shooter brimming with diabolical enemies powerful weapons and metal music set, set out on an infernal journey in order to achieve the purest of goals vengeance i love this oh, i love this so much your ability to shoot okay so this is kind of how the gameplay works your ability to shoot on the beat will directly impact both the damage you deal and how awesome the music sounds the more in sync you are with the rhythm the more intense the music will become and the more destruction you will cause uh and they uh it says play through an epic storyline uh brilliantly narrated by award winner actor oh it's narrated by troy baker interesting well that shouldn't be a surprise because he narrates literally every game ever uh then conquer the leaderboards or challenge yourself in challenge mode um now they did mention uh that there's like specific modes that are going to be featured with the vr version but that does include the full 
uh, story campaign or whatever that is going to be included and then there's a couple additional modes like challenge modes and a couple other things but uh this game has overwhelmingly uh positive reviews on steam uh right here uh, it's got overwhelmingly positive both recent and for just their all-time reviews and like i said i've had so many people tell me this is really good let's take a look at just a couple of these reviews uh that they have to say here uh the uh jabarius jamal uh says the rhythm gameplay is awesome but the soundtracks are taking the game to a whole nother level of enjoyment i like that um uh sunray says when you first start the game you'll get chills uh, and your uh oh god and your peener will rise <laughs> oh god i should have scanned these first after you complete the game you'll be lying on the floor with uh with your okay okay that's that's just raunchy sunray um this is a children's show uh i love uh i love this one though lateralist great name by the way it says 10 out of 10 <laughs> wood metal again there you go that's probably the the best review right there. 10 out of 10 would medal again. Um, now, I don't think we have uh, any price point on this game. Okay, it's 30, $30 on Steam. Um, so I'm guessing it could be something <laughs> uh, similar on... It could be something similar on uh, when it... Or, or, eventually releases on psvr 2 and it does seem like it is going to be a separate thing uh because it actually is available i think to wish list now so <laughs> lair says why are the reviews so horny because metal devil horns you know they it all just goes together <laughs> bunch of horny devils out there but uh but yeah, this is a the the gameplay mechanics. I love the sound of the gameplay mechanics. Uh no pun intended. I love that it's it's kind of got like a little bit of doom as a first person shooter and then it's got a, a little bit of like pistol whip because uh pistol whip you do get a better score based on the rhythm that you're shooting at. So we do have a kind of similar experience with a game like this before. And then of course the way it affects the music is kind of like a um is kind of like a, a rhythm game like rock band or in our case drums rock which i also highly recommend drums rock a uh, really great game um but uh on topic matt mark uh thank you so much with the donation i appreciate your support my friend keeping that tip train rolling uh really appreciate the support and the love right back at you homie says love hellsinger the mechanic is basically if you shoot the gun at the right time to the beat, it plays in totality. If you miss the song, if you miss the song changes. Cannot describe how much of a trance this game puts you in. Must have. Very cool to see, man. I cannot uh I cannot wait to check this out. I love the uh the sound of the mechanics and the way it works and uh for all of us that love metal out there, um they do have let's see here. It's artists like uh, Serge Tankian, um, people from, oh, Dark Tranquility. Um, let's see here. Archangel, Lorna Shore. Oh, funny enough, I just saw Lorna Shore uh, pretty recently. Um, they're, they're a pretty popular band. Uh, but yeah, Will Ramos from Lor Lorna Shore. These are, uh, these are really popular uh, people here. Um, Soil Work. Dark Tranquility, Poetry of Cinder. Some of these I haven't heard of because I'm I'm not necessarily a scholar of metal. I just uh, listen to a lot of it and really like <laughs> really like some good stuff. So there's some sounds like there's some good tunes here. I like that there's actual. Ooh, I do know Lamb of God. Um, so really really good stuff here, man. Uh, cannot wait. Super excited. Now this is coming 2024. And the last thing I'll say on. Uh, on this is that it's interesting how this came to be um you know we talked about i think i don't know if i've talked about it here uh but recently there was the announcement of flat to vr studios and uh for uh and that's basically a bunch of members from team beef 
and other modders. You know, the modding community is basically the most popular thing on PC VR right now. That's that's absolutely where I don't know if I'd call it a I guess it's a market, but it's it's more of a community driven kind of thing uh, with the modding support. And uh, our good friend, my good friend over here at um, Ivory, uh, actually, or no, the flat to VR people here. Or, oh, let's get this uh, up here. Um, I've been very, I've been very chatty on Twitter lately. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, flat to VR. Um, these guys are amazing. They, uh, of course, I think they, uh, you know, have are in charge of like the. Uh, uh, UEVR, the Unreal Engine VR, which was huge, takes every Unreal Engine 4 and every 5 game, lets you instantly just flip a switch and put it into VR, and then you can kind of tweak it after. Uh, but he said, Living Frey made a fantastic VR mod for Metal Hellsinger, and the devs decided to create and release an official VR port with a little bit more polish. Um, says this game is a must, should definitely wish list. You feel like such a badass while playing. Um, I hope this is the... Uh, the start of a trend uh, that we begin to see. This is what makes me really excited about the prospect of a studio like flat to VR um, coming around because they are, uh, they have already announced uh, that they are working on an official licensed title, um, but they're operating as an official studio. They're trying to make this more than just a community kind of driven thing. They're trying to make this like official. So, uh, it's interesting that this game, uh, Metal Hellsinger VR, was actually the byproduct of a similar case where somebody made a mod for the game and the developers thought it was really cool and decided to make an official, like really polished version because that's the big difference between mods and official VR ports, versions, whatever you want to call it, is that nine times out of 10, the official versions like actually feel built for vr and and not saying that some of the mods don't but there is a lot in many cases a lot of jank a lot of issues so um bypassing that and getting a nice polished port uh is really really cool and uh we've got more to talk about with our good friends over there at flat to vr and ivory vr here in just a minute um but first uh violator with the Donation, thank you so much, man. Says, what's up, brother? Nothing much, man. Kicking back, relaxing, back from PAX. Uh, sounds like I'm about to rap, but I'm not because I can't. <laughs> uh, I'll save that for Nansa. What's up, Nansa? He, that dude, can spit fire. Um, uh, anyways, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, the Marble Sod, holy hell. Um, thank you so much for your generous donation, my friend. All of you guys, all of, all of you, I really... I can't thank you enough for your support. You really like I'm 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 flabbergasted. Uh, uh, he says, "Holy crap! I never get to see you live. I'm very interested in Metal Hellsinger, and I'm looking forward to discovering new bands. Glad everyone seems to like it. Uh, back to lurking. Stay awesome, everyone. You stay awesome as well, man. And I appreciate all of you out there lurking in the shadows just as much, man. I love you all." Um, yeah, man, super excited about this. Thank you again, uh, Marvel Sod, for that donation. That is uh, extremely generous of you, all of your donations. Uh, I really appreciate each and every one of you. Um, but yeah, man. Oh, so let's see here. Uh, wow. Yeah, man. Uh, dude, hit me up. I've got, I've got metal for days. If you need some metal music to listen to, I've got metal for days for you. Um, right off the bat uh <laughs> shoot now you put me on the spot and my brain goes uh my brain just completely drops out but message me i'll, I'll hook you up with some metal tunes uh you'll trust me you'll want to hear it it's good stuff i got some good stuff i give you secret stash <laughs> uh anyways uh so moving on guys we're uh we're not done talking about uh flat to vr and and ivory vr um because there's an interesting news story that broke recently, and that involves, uh, oh my God, I've got so many tabs open now. Um, that involves, we've gotten some new details. Now this isn't gonna interest everybody, but uh, this is going to be something that's very significant. Uh, that is, of course, uh, Ivory VR and some other people have taken notice that in the latest firmware update, 
it has enabled PC access for PSVR 2 support. Uh, he says this means it's no longer necessary to use driver hardware workarounds um, to make it work on Windows. Um, and uh, they did actually, he says still to be uh, determined if it enables NVIDIA use, which I think they already did actually confirm after this. Um, and there is one thing of important to note here, and that is that it will still require uh, some kind of adapter. And the reason being, um, hold on, let me get my legendary tails up here. Um, the reason it will still require that is because most graphics cards uh, don't have a USB Type-C port, which is what the PSVR 2 cable is. And so in most cases, it's going to require some kind of like USB slash video uh, splitter kind of thing, uh, most likely. And it'll probably be in a separate adapter that'll be sold. I don't know. We don't know really if Sony's going to sell it. I'd, we'd imagine so. Um but here's the thing about PC VR support, man. I mean, at the end of the day, like I play on my PlayStation 5. That's just usually where the library that I like is. The library is, I mean, I can hardly keep up with the library as is that's on the PS5. It is incredible. Um, we're getting like banger after banger after banger only three months in. And on top of that, even... Uh, even like indie developers and indie games are really raising their game. Um, if you see me kind of vocal on Twitter lately, it's because, you know, I do want PSVR 2 to uh, continue to do well, like to do much, much better than what it is, I should say. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's going to take a lot of work from Sony on their end. And um, I think PC support is a good first step. Uh, PC support is a good first step in supporting the PSVR 2 headset device because a lot of people are going to want a premium headset uh, that, you know, has like HDR. We still have to see some details as to what kind of support um, this is going to bring. Uh, you know, things like eye tracking, haptic support, uh, all those other things. So we still have plenty of details. We don't know if those are going to be 100% supported yet. Um, I'd like to think they are. Um, but only really Sony knows at this time. Um, but I, I think, uh, I think the more use that you can get out of the headset, the better, uh, adding more things. This isn't going to take away anything from the PlayStation VR two. This is only going to add value to it. Um, for those that, you know, right now they have the option to have like a standalone and a, and a PC. Um, that's a pretty good value. And Sony is realizing that they're getting their ass kicked and they have to respond. They have to start making moves. And that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, we did not, I did not think personally that they were going to add PC support uh, at any point. Um, and that obviously wasn't the original plan. Now, that being said, um, this, uh, let's see here. Uh, well, hold on. Leo AI or Leo Al says, why adapter quest link, uh, goes into the chassis, uh, USB C or even USB a with a C adapter. Yeah. I mean, it could just be as simple enough as just an adapter. Um, it's just a lot of the, you know, a lot of the experts, because look, I'm not the biggest technical jargon kind of guy like i'm i'm pretty tech savvy and stuff but i care about games first and foremost i'm much more of a software guy uh when it comes to i mean i have knowledge obviously i have a degree in uh in in computer information systems but really my specialty when it comes to this stuff i'm not digital foundry okay like i don't get into all the well this has a a, a thing <laughs> well this has a you know this kind of lens and this whatever i'm like does it play good games that are badass and look really good? Uh, that's what I can tell you, yes or no. Um, I don't get into all the technical stuff. Like, I just go by what I feel and what I experience, and, and I go by that um, when it comes to my gaming anyways. Um, yes, the, the higher the tech specs, of course, the better, but uh, that's not my first and foremost kind of thing. I'm more of a console gamer kind of guy uh, because you know why? Because I hate setting that shit up. Like... I, I have uh, a PC now, and uh, 
PC VR. I've never really liked standalone. Like I'm, I'm not a, again. I'm not a graphics snob, but the standalone graphics just kills me. Like it, it it's so un, non-immersive to me. It, it takes me out of the immersiveness. It, it uh, it immersion, I should say. Uh, and like you know, to me, the graphics and stuff are more important than being wireless. I don't like. I like to stand in one spot where I know I'm not going to, you know run into my wall or something like that freaks me out so i even when given the freedom to move around i stand still because i'm just i'm just not comfortable running around without being able to see my surroundings it it freaks me out um i like standing in one place i like the hybrid approach of like having joysticks and moving around and you know doing some simple body motions and stuff not i don't like physically turning i don't like uh running around any of that stuff but Anyways, guys, um, while, and you know, like I said, we have to wait and see what kind of, uh, you know, the, the final details as to what we are going to be getting uh, with PC support. But I will tell you, uh, my channel will mostly remain, uh, mostly remain just the console stuff. Uh, that's going to be the majority. However, I do have a PC uh, now that is that can support it. So I might have like a like a sideshow kind of thing or like a pick a day out of the week where I cover, you know, talk about like the PC side of stuff. Really, my biggest interest is playing PlayStation classics or play or popular PlayStation IPs that will be playable with PSVR 2 on a PC. Um, that's what my personal goal is. Uh, I want to I want to stream on my channel, uh, you know, something like Final Fantasy VII Remake in VR or um, you guys got to see Spyro, like playing Spyro in VR or, you know, some of these other games this Lara Croft Tomb Raider thing. I uh, to me, my heart is very much a, a lot, very invested in the PlayStation ecosystem. And so having to, you know, use some of this stuff, Unreal Engine VR stuff uh that does interest me when it comes to being able to play uh, PlayStation games in VR. Like I'll do that any way I possibly can. We're not getting Spyro in VR ever. Otherwise, um, I can tell you that right now. Um, so, like I said, the main focus will still be PS5, uh, but I do. But this will be uh, a new addition to the channel that I'm really looking forward to, um, and I hope the the support is pretty sweet. Uh, but yeah, man, so, uh, looking forward to that and showing that off for you guys. It's going to be a fun time, man. It's going to be a really, really fun time. Um, Asian Panda, thank you so much for the donation, my friend. Keep keeping that tip train going. I appreciate this love and support right back at you says I'm here to show some support. Let's go. Uh, made it to a live stream. Just want to tell you, I appreciate the hard work you put into these videos and update. I have a PC too, but I just like the console more. Me too, man. Me too. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I, I kind of, you know, I've, I have, I'm very opinionated, right? Like I share a lot of opinions. I share about how much I love PlayStation VR two. And I always have people writing me 10 page paragraphs saying, well, you don't know what it's like to play the other stuff. Well, now I have, and I can tell you, I still go back to my PlayStation 5. Like, it's, I don't know what it is. It's just, I just like it. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like how some people say they like gaming on flat screen because they don't like the hassle of, of a wire, of a putting on a headset. I don't really like the hassle of having to configure every single time I want to play something and just have a good time. This is why I like consoles to begin with uh, is you just, you literally just plug it in and you turn it on and it works. They go through months, ex months of extensive testing with their games. Like Sony's, uh, you know, um, uh, QA process, as you guys know, is pretty tough. And uh, while some things slip through the cracks, uh, a lot of the times, they are very strict about certain things like like if if you put in a game it has to work um and with pc it does require a lot of tinkering and stuff i just don't have the time and patience for that i want to get in i want to spend hours and hours playing games and not getting the game to run because by the time i get it running i'm like freaking exhausted um but again that being said there's you know there's a whole uh 
bunch of cool stuff out there that I can't wait to uh, to check out and get into. Um, Walid is a game cat now. Thank you so much for the donation. Says haven't heard from Alejandro Game Gato in a while. I think I saw Alejandro on Monday or recently. Um, I did uh, I did hear about uh, that. Um, but yeah, I think PC supports a really s smart move uh, by Sony uh, just to the, the next thing. This is the next thing Sony has to do. They need to cut the price of the PSVR 2. Again, if you've seen me uh, lately talking about it, I've been very vocal on Twitter. They have to reduce the price of the PSVR 2 to make it more consumer friendly. I get that it's an expensive, nice piece of tech uh, and everything, but I firmly believe that they can cut the price and they should because if it's gonna be treated like an accessory, it needs to cost the price of an accessory, not more than the thing. Somebody, I think it was like this Lincoln Clay guy uh, said, you know, I compare it to a car. It's like, you never want to pay more for your rims than for your car. <laughs> and I wholeheartedly agree. It's a good analogy. Um, it, it's an, it, at the end of the day, you know, Sony has their flat screen stuff. Yes. Uh, VR is big enough and popular enough to be its own platform maybe not financially, but at least like um, in terms of like supporting games, uh, the types of games it can play, it can hold a lot of stuff on there. So um, they need to reduce the price and then they need to announce Astrobot too. So if you see me on Twitter uh, harping about that a lot, uh, that's what I believe. I think PC support is a great first start. Um, next, they need to cut the price. They need to release Astrobot or announce Astrobot 2 uh, with PSVR 2 support. And then uh, the last thing that they could do is, you know, there's there's still a bunch of other stuff they could do. Uh, and I'm hoping that they take their situation with PSVR 2 because obviously it's not, you know, Sony have said in their eyes it's selling okay, that it is a challenging category for them. Um, the thing is, is the competition right now is much better than what it was when they first released PSVR. So they were able to get away with running, uh, you know, selling PSVR one with move controllers, 10 year old controllers, uh, because quite frankly, the only other option was to go spend $5,000 on a headset and a PC for a limited library. So now you've got the quest, the meta and Sony are really the they're really all we got when it comes to like, you know, making VR grow and saving VR and 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 nourishing it and uh, everything. That's that's all we got. So uh, I support Meta as well in terms of like, you know, what they're doing with VR um, because we need them. And and honestly, I think they kind of need us, too. Um, but uh, let's see here. Anyways. Uh, I think I, I've, I kind of lost track of what I was uh, what I was saying, but we got a couple donations real quick. Um, let me go ahead and get some new. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's get some Demio going here. Um, Shen Muzo uh, says still type best VR locomotion since Windlands. Nice, yeah. Stilt came out. Um, still came out a couple weeks ago. That's what I'm saying, man. These indie games are getting really, really good. Um, last gen, it was very. I mean, even even last year, you know, it's like with indie games, you never really know. My biggest problem is a lot of a lot of indie games in early gen were just kind of like they were just kind of like they liked the technology, but but they didn't really understand like game design. And and I feel like indie devs, that's the biggest difference between this gen and last gen, is that indie devs are getting really good at making games. Uh, that's why stuff like Ultra Wings 2, Stilt, Legendary Tales, uh, Cube, uh, these have all been fantastic games as well as, uh, you know, great use of the tech, which is awesome. Um, and by no means does it seem to be stopping or slowing down anytime soon. Uh, it's getting insane uh, and it's just getting better and better. Um, but yeah, love still, uh, I need, I need to go back and play it some more. I, uh, luckily I got to play it a good chunk at launch, but this is a lot to keep up with, man. It's a lot to keep up with right now. Um, Samson one, four, three VR. Thank you so much for the donation. My friend I'll, uh, was of course a pleasure to meet you as well at PAX. Samson got moves y'all Samson, Samson, uh, Julia and, uh, and metal gear solid Fritz. 
they need to be VR models because they're the only people that can make VR look cool when playing it. <laughs> it ain't gonna be me, that's for sure. I'm like flailing my arms and stuff. They're like dancing and and they got like good ass moves, dude. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Fritz was he was looking like John Wick out there playing Pistol Whip. Um, good shit, man. He says at work but lurking and just wanted to say hello, hello, Samson, my friend. Um. <laughs> Mel Kaya the game cat says meta is beta. If you know, you know. <laughs> bad Robo says, uh, oh, I'm I'm not gonna entertain you, Bad Robo, but I will say hi. Um <laughs> uh let's see here. Magnum gaming, yes, it is an enchanted beanie. That is correct. Um let's see here, what else we got? I do like to try and, uh, you know, I want to I want to bounce the conversation off you guys as well a little bit here. So I will be checking your comments. Uh, I'm really bad at it while trying to run a show and talk nonstop. But uh, I will be trying to catch any uh, comments that pique my interest or just want to respond to that I can. Um, all right, guys. So, uh, yeah, so that's a lot of the news. Um, now we got one new release to get to to talk about here. Um, and that is, of course, Overdark. Uh, Overdark was supposed to come out yesterday and actually was delayed until today. Um, I gave, Brian and I gave some first impressions on Overdark um, and I've played it more since then. And honestly, my, my uh, experience has not changed like a lot just yet. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and tell you what my thoughts on Overdark, just in case you're interested, um, especially with the news of another game that was supposed to release tomorrow getting delayed, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but Overdark is by Nox Noctis. It is, of course, a sequel to uh, Do Not Open, uh, which was first announced in 2020. Um, this game is a horror puzzle game at its core. I mean, that is straight up what it is. It looks really really pretty i think it's a small team too it's only like a team of like five people very this is an indie game uh it looks very very good for an indie game it's very sharp uh nice like detailed uh polished look look to it um and uh unfortunately i haven't beaten this game yet uh, as some of you may or may not know i usually really don't like puzzles uh, and that's usually because I'm really bad at them. <laughs> like, no, I am terrible at puzzles. Um, but, uh, but uh, anyways, I, uh, yeah, so I've been enjoying this game overall. Uh, I've actually really, really liked it. And, uh, you know, <sighs> there are a couple things about it, though. Um, but so far, you know, I have a long history of really hating uh, games like this where, you know, a lot of indie horror games I think are terrible. I hated so many of them uh, last gen. I, uh, compilation, <laughs> um, I, uh, last gen, I hated so many different indie horror games. Um, I just I just thought that they weren't scary, that they weren't they were both not scary, that they weren't good games. And uh this one has kind of uh has kind of gone against the grain on that. Um actually uh I have enjoyed this quite a bit. It it's I wouldn't say it's like super scary, but it is pretty creepy. It is very, very high in the creepy factor. Um and the puzzles are not really um they're not like super difficult uh but i think this game has has made for a really fun time so far uh, i've been really enjoying it um dj disco beaver says puzzles games are frustrating if you're not good at puzzle games yes and i've been frustrated a lot in this game but it's not all just because it's puzzle games um some of it has to do with so I think this game has a wonderful presentation um, it's got you know I'm not really interested in the story but it does have good like you know just kind of dialogue to kind of keep the game going along or whatever there is supposed to be some kind of significant story there that I really have no idea what's going on um, 
<laughs> but uh but yeah, it the the thing about this game uh is one thing. So they did tell me that first of all, they listened to the feedback from Monday and they are working on some of these things. This is also an early access version of the game that I have, and they said they have, I think, a day one patch coming. So there is a lot of stuff, known issues that they said are going to be addressed. But one thing that we gave some feedback on that they actually props to the devs for listening to us Monday. Uh, obviously, we've been enjoying the game. It seems like majority of people have been enjoying the game so far. Um, but there are a couple minor issues, I would say, that do kind of hinder the experience a little bit. In particular, with a lot of VR puzzle games, there's a lot of interactions. You have to interact with a lot of objects. You have to grab things, you know, um, all sorts of physical interactions with these objects. And this game is a little unpolished in terms of its interact interactions. Um, that is a little problematic for me. Uh, it, it, it's... It's not so much that it's immersion breaking or anything, but it's just a little unpolished and it feels a little janky. This game has a little bit of that indie jank to it. Visually, it looks phenomenal. Like they knocked it out of the park visually, minus some frame rate stuff here and there, and maybe a couple graphical glitches that may or may not be fixed by launch. Um, all minor things. Um, for me personally, but the physical interactions with this game, when you're having to, when the entire game consists of interacting with objects and things, that needs to be tuned up a little bit. That's really my biggest complaint, besides sometimes it just be like leaving you feeling a little bit like you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. Um, I get a lot of, you know, a lot of VR games, they are kind of like part of the puzzle is to figure out what the puzzle is first. And this game mostly gives you some nice clues. It does give you like an objective marker uh, or like it tells you what your objective is, um, but it'll sometimes just give you what your objective is. And then g there's a whole area to explore to figure out how to solve that objective. And it doesn't really like lead you on all the time. Um, so there's a couple moments where the game has some weird bad like you know kind of janky physical interactions there's a couple moments where it uh it it kind of gets a little frustrating um but when this game works it's really cool it's it's really really fun i actually like that it's purely puzzle based um i like i don't mind you know we've gotten stuff like propagation paradise hotel if you want like a like a horror survival game like that's what what i would go recommend but it, it is a little bit less, uh, even though it's like stressful to play this because it's got really good atmosphere, some good sound design, things like that. Um, it's a little bit uh, easier. Put it, it puts my mind at ease a little bit knowing that like, you know, I just really have to solve a puzzle. Now, that being said, there are some puzzles that if you don't solve in time, you'll die. So that's stressful as hell. <laughs> that is that is like my nightmare. It's like it's like solve this puzzle before you die. That is that is literally the worst situation you could put me in ever. Um, and that was extremely stressful. But overcoming it was was satisfying enough, um, despite again some of the jank and stuff kind of making that a little hard to execute. So despite that little bit of uh, you know, gameplay jank. Uh, the The game is very enjoyable overall. I think it's a really well designed, well thought out game. Uh, it again, it's beautiful. It has pretty good sound design. It's got some good mechanics into it. Um, so, I think uh, uh, you know, I think the game is 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 worth recommending, uh, especially if you like horror games, puzzle games, and uh, you know, it's not it's not like Red Matter. Uh, you know, like how Red Matter was like a sci-fi puzzle adventure where it's like, it's a puzzle game, but you feel like you're playing a sci-fi adventure. This is a puzzle game, but you feel like you're in a horror movie or something. Um, and it's, it's pretty cool. I like it, man. It's a, it's a, it's something different than just, you know, the same thing over and over. It's just purely puzzle. And I've seen so many games try to attempt this before and we're just either broken, extremely like unplayably janky, uh, or just not good overall and this is a this feels like a good game at the very least it might need a patch or two maybe it'll get that on day one i don't know just yet um 
but it's pretty good so far. It's it's very very solid. I would say solid. Um, but that is uh, my impressions of like I said, maybe about halfway, a little bit more halfway through uh, of of this game. Uh, biggest complaints are just a little bit of jank and a little bit of not knowing what I'm supposed to be doing and a little bit of like it not guiding you properly, um, which can be frustrating and. That's really my biggest complaints. Other than that, I've actually enjoyed it overall. All right, so now it is time to talk about uh, something else. Actually, we're going to turn on dynamic foveated rendering uh, for the mess, the rest of the episode. Or reviews. <laughs> Atom says, well, reviews said it's amazing already. I don't know if I'd call it amazing. Uh, I'd call it solid. Um, you know how reviews can be these days, Adam. They're either, um, it's either the game is amazing or the game is trash. And in most cases, most cases, it's like neither usually. It's somewhere in between or, you know, slightly above, slightly below. Um, most games are either like very good or good, very good, average, you know, or bad, like, um, and then occasionally there's some that are like amazing, like legendary tales. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, this, this, I, I, I'd call it solid. Like I'd actually call it like good to very good. Uh, if it didn't have that jank with it and stuff and, and kind of need some polish. Um, but it's almost there and, and what is there right now is solid enough. Uh, kill artist. Yes, it was uh, pretty stressful uh, playing a couple sections of that, <laughs> trying to solve a puzzle without uh, before you die. That is definitely. But uh, in other news, so the good news is, is that there was going to be two horror games tomorrow. And I'm actually, I got to be honest here, I am extremely relieved <laughs> that there's only going to be one now. Um because we got some news on Madison, but we're going to preface this whole section here because there are a bunch of games that have had some announcements or uh, have confirmed dynamic foveated rendering, for those who don't know, which is eye track foveated rendering, literally like one of the best um, uh, features of the headset. And uh, we, we did have some... Uh, we did have some interesting info uh, when we met with BJ from... Uh, from Legendary Tales, he did actually uh, share a little bit of info regarding uh, this. Hold on, what am I getting? Oh, getting some frame drops. Um, he did actually have an interesting info on dynamic foveated rendering and the way that it works. Um, this will be part of, like I said, uh, Brian's review that he will be, or no, I'm sorry, Brian's interview that he'll be posting on uh, Patreon. But uh, he made it a point to kind of say, BJ, by the way, uh, from, from Legendary Tales, Urban Wolf Games, that the way eye tracking foveated rendering works, it, it actually isn't really about increasing performance by using it. Um, he said that there's a lot of confusion around this, and, and he doesn't think that it actually increases a game's performance by using eye tracking. In fact, on the contrary, it, it actually uses more resources uh, doing so. And I thought that was a really interesting take. I don't know if that applies to every single game or every single engine or what, um, but he said really when it comes down to it, it's all about just adding, uh, you know, having really, really crisp graphics is basically what it does. But it does take a, ta it does cost more resources of the uh, of the the speed, because um, I think a lot of people were under the impression that you know you can use eye track foveated rendering to increase performance by you know having the places you're not looking render as smaller. I mean they have showed us that, um, but I think uh, I think uh, that I'm with some of you here in that. Oh, he's talking about super sampling with it. Um, we heard, I think early on that, that, you know, that it does exactly how I explained, um, we've heard a thousand times that it, it, it does work to, uh, free up resources because 
it renders the places you're not looking at lower graphical fidelity. So, you know, maybe it was in terms of his game or maybe he was talking about in the way that it works with uh, a certain engine or system. Um, but, well, I don't know. Uh, well, maybe maybe we'll have to, I'll have to watch that interview again to see exactly what he means. But anyways, dynamic foveated rendering has been uh, something extremely, extremely important uh, for the PlayStation VR 2 and in, in terms of the graphical fidelity, making sure games look as sharp and uh, clear as possible. Uh, you know, games that have achieved this, uh, we've seen the difference, right? We saw No Man's Sky at launch. Um, we saw the no, we saw No Man's Sky at launch versus what it looks like now. Uh, we've seen games like Red Matter, uh, Red Matter Two, I should say, um, and how amazing that looks. Um, and yeah, it's 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 super super important. In fact, I think I think the reason people like it so much, of course, I mean I like it too, is uh, not only is it like you know it's there to be used for that purpose, um, but also Sony's reprojection system. Uh, they're they're sixty reprojected to one hundred twenty twenty frames per second. Oftentimes results in uh, some graphical clarity issues. Uh, things like ghosting which i don't really personally see very much um but i do see what it, it to me when when i see reprojection sometimes like the the blacks end up not being true blacks or um i don't know sometimes it looks like i'm looking at a projector screen versus actual like just native resolution which looks super sharp and super clear and that's the, been the big difference with uh, for what I've noticed. Um, games that use that are super clear. So we got an interesting update from Perp Games regarding Madison VR. Uh, and let's go ahead and take a look at what they had to say. Um, this is actually, so this is both part of a an announcement that Perp Games made regarding uh, Madison. But this is also a huge, huge deal. Uh, it is actually much bigger than just the news surrounding Madison. And they say, on March 22nd, Unity released a new software developer kit which allowed us the possibility to hit 90 hertz mode instead of our planned 60 to 120 interpolation uh, mode, which is the reprojection. We were hopeful we could implement this change in Madison VR via a rapid patch and st uh, still hit the release date. However, it's clear now that we can't. In, in addition to the development, Sony quite rightly mandate an additional full five-day submission after implementation. Um, we would like to give you a little more information about how the new SDK will improve your Madison VR gameplay. Our ambition is to create a realistic and daunting atmosphere with Madison VR, and we achieve this through a realistic real-time lighting and shadows. These elements heavily utilize the CPU on all platforms. To make this possible in VR, we use a technical uh, a technique called single pass rendering. So that resource heavy operations are only done once per frame. Unfortunately, our use of this previously precluded us from also using the eye tracked dynamic foveated rendering, DFR, feature on PSVR 2 as the Unity PSVR 2 implementation had a known issue with this combination. Without DFR, it would have been it would have only been possible to release using the 60 slash 120 frames per second reprojected mode, uh, which worked adequately. However, we always felt uh, we always felt fell a little short of the quality we were striving for. As of Mar March 22nd, Unity's new SDK now opens up DFR and by extension the possibility to hit the 90 hertz mode. A last minute improvement we simply can't ignore. Um, I'm going to skip the rest of it here. Uh, so this is, this is essentially a very, very big deal because, so the news of course, is that Madison has been delayed, uh, from tomorrow, which is fine in my opinion, uh, because I agree with their sentiment that you want these games to run at, um, 
you know, you want the best clarity and, and these things affect immersion, uh, greatly. Um, but, uh, but I 100% agree and stand by and support their decision to delay the game, even though it's last second, even though it's like for like the eighth time, um, again, a game released in a bad state is basically screwed forever. Uh, it, it will never have the impact that it could like launch your launch day is the most important time of uh, to release a game uh, because that's when all the reviews are going to cover most reviewers don't go back and update reviews you know your first reviews that you get are pretty much the first impressions are everything um uh not every game can can recover <clears throat> in in every uh, like you know from a from a horrible launch some do of course um, but those are usually not smaller indie titles. Those are usually much, much bigger games um, with, with a lot more funding and resources. Uh, but this is huge because, yes, there was a known issue regarding eye track foveated rendering with Unity engines. Uh, this has been a big pain point. And honestly, the issue has not, even though developers have taken the blunt, the brunt of the blame, um, the issue was not actually really on developers entirely. It was mostly on Unity and Sony with their uh, reprojection or or support for these things. Um, so this is a huge thing because a lot of indie games use Unity and uh, this could really, this isn't going to only help Madison VR, but this is going to help you know, any developer that potentially wants to go in uh, and especially the ones that have found some success on PSVR 2 or want to create some buzz uh, around their game a little bit. Um, this is an easy way to to generate some buzz. Um, but this is a super important feature. So looks like, you know, even though Madison has been delayed by at the very least a couple weeks, um, it looks like this is going to all be for the better in the end because I 100% agree with them that, you know, we want the game to look as sharp, as clear as possible. And let me tell you guys something. I think uh, I think we actually kind of owe Brian uh, on this one because Brian's been a quietly. He won't take he won't publicly take credit for this, I don't think. Um, but he's been a big champion of using eye tracking and 90 hertz, 90 hertz uh, um, frames per second. He. I've seen him over and over and over. Every single developer, um, you know, I talk with him a lot behind the scenes and literally every single developer, uh, he has been saying, listen, if you can get this thing in 90 frames per second, that is much more important than having reprojected to 120. So, um, you know, credit where credit's due. Brian uh, is owed a lot of credit here for communicating to devs how important 90 frames per second is as opposed to 60 frames per second reprojected. And I think that's absolutely correct. 90 frames per second is plenty to feel comfortable, to have a smooth gameplay experience um, versus 120. I mean, 120 is great, but it is not a necessity, especially when it when it comes at the cost of having ghosting or, or uh, you know, different clarity issues, things like that. Anything that affects the clarity in a, ne uh, in a negative way. Um, so so sh shout out to Brian, props to him for that, because it actually seems like it's starting to be, uh, to kind of take hold. It sounds like a lot of developers are starting to take notice that, um, that uh, the, 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 be the most optimal way to optimize their games. Um, and Nihilus Ryan, my metal feline friend says, we're a year and change in, uh, and devs are finally figuring PSVR 2 out. Yeah, man, that's the thing, you know, that that is a really important thing to note as well, is that not only is PSVR 2 in its infancy, but also VR is in its infancy. So there, we are still going through a lot of the growing pains. I, I, I uh, reference sh the great Sean Layden a bunch. Uh, he talks about everybody wants P they want VR to be VR 5.0, but we have to get there slowly. That's and and everybody was, you know, a lot of the mainstream, I guess, was kind of expecting every single problem, every single issue solved overnight and then released. That's just not the reality. That's not 
how technology works uh really it, it takes years and years of evolving and evolving and fine tuning and testing and feedback and and like so much stuff goes into it each and every year um that a, a lot of people you know they kind of take it for granted like that they're just i should have a 4k you know i should have a 4k uh game in vr that's you know and the headset needs to cost 200 dollars. <laughs> i mean it would be nice don't get me wrong but that's just not how things work man um and that's why uh that's that's why that's been kind of a learning lesson for me as well i mean i've been very patient and and kind of try to observe a lot i'm very much an observer and and try to just keep my ear to the ground see what's going on um and you know a lot of the things have been learning processes and and dfr and 90 uh frames per second seem to be that next step in in, in the right direction for optimizing games and having the best clarity and experience with them um but uh so anyways Madison VR, still my most anticipated horror game. That has not changed. I, 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 would, I will happily wait for this uh, to be the best version it can possibly be uh, versus it come out and then have to wait and basically go into my wait for a patch folder and then, and then wait for it to get updated and then jump in. You know, once kind of the, the hype has died down, once it's, you know, the, that ship has already sailed. So I want to hit this game uh with the best possible version that it can be the first time i play it first impressions are everything um let's see here what's up william yeah man i uh i did talk about um the space stations in the beginning of the stream check it out man um but so the madison vr is not the only game that's got an announcement uh regarding I track foveated rendering and 90 frames per second. Hallelujah. There is much, much more. Um, I've got a couple games here, including one that got updated today. Um, but first, let's talk about Lo-Fi. Ah, didn't see that coming, did you? I bet you thought I was going to talk about Arcan Age. You were wrong. Um, actually, uh, somebody had asked on the X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, um, I still I like to call it Twitter, but I don't really care. I just as long as I know what you're talking about. Um, somebody had asked uh, Blair Renau on uh, the developer behind LoFi uh, what the uh, you know will this game support dynamic foveated rendering? And uh, he actually said yes. He he said not only that, but it's also going to look very good and run really well. Now. Uh, this is this game has been one that we've always been keeping a uh, an eye on. Um, definitely one of the more kind of an anticipated games, but you know, this is more of like an open world. At least to me, this doesn't seem like this is not your traditional kind of game. Like this guy is very much into the tech side of VR more so than he is into video games. Although it has gameplay and it has some game elements uh it is at the end of the day though uh seems like it's mostly supposed to be like a big giant sandbox where you kind of get to shape the way uh your experience goes with it you can be a good guy you can be a bad guy uh i guess i disconnected for a second okay uh there's a lot of cool stuff in this game uh that uh, it seems pretty cool. Like the, uh, the, sorry about that guys. I think I, I, my stream said it cut out for a second. I don't know what happened. Did it cut out for anybody? I don't know. Anyways, um, despite this, not, despite myself being a huge gamer, um, I'm still very intrigued by this, uh, by the VRAF mechanics of uh, cyberpunk. I love cyberpunk settings. Um, and Oh, bad robo. Was it really you? You asked him about the foveated rendering. Very nice. Um, Okay, uh, let's see, is it still cutting out or is it good? Are we good here? Are we good? I don't know what happened. The internets, the internets are being hacked. Um, sound the alarms. Um, let's see here, check, check. 
We're good. We're good. Okay, we're good now. Awesome. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I don't know what happened, but had a there was a there was a a, a solar flare that <laughs> that that knocked out the internet temporarily or something. Um, but uh, let's see here. But anyways, guys. So this is supposed to be like an open sandbox game. Uh, this is just another that has uh, been confirmed. I'm really looking forward to this. The developer did um, say at one point uh, that. The, the developer did say at one point that they are basically out of money and they have a huge sense of urgency to get this game out this year. So uh, this game is expected to be coming out this year. Um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Again, I'm, I'm going in with, you know, tempered expectations here. I don't want to like overhype it or anything. From what we see in this this footage here, it looks pretty sweet. I mean, a lot of the things you can do in the game, it looks pretty sweet. Um, and it seems like, you know, it's got a great art style, great realism, everything. I love uh, cyberpunk stuff. Um, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm sorry about that, guys. I don't know what's going on. But anyways, okay, reloading the stream, fix it. Everybody reload, reload, reload. You ever played an arcade game? Reload, <laughs> reload stream, it works. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyways, but so now uh, we'll just have to wait and get more details on this later. Uh, what is that? Uh, Ryan, let's go sports team game cat says, I can't wait to ride the hover car. Yeah, man, uh, it, it is an open world sandbox so that freedom um this is a perfect game you know lo-fi seems like just like a perfect kind of game for vr enthusiasts people that love the tech people that love to be immersed uh and uh yeah that's gonna be awesome i'm i'm really looking forward to that one i hope it's good i hope there's enough game there as well that's that's gonna be really imp uh, important for me um let me see here i'm gonna back up real quick uh, make sure I didn't miss any donations real quick. And then we're going to move on to the next game. Uh, do, 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 do. I went on, uh, King Rolo, the cartoon something. Why can't I see the rest of your name? King Rolo, the cartoon games cat. Uh, thank you so much for the donation, my friend. Keeping that tip train going. I appreciate the love and support right back at you. Uh, says just to show my support. I appreciate you. I support you as well, my friend. Uh, we've also got, uh, Jacob Braz uh, with the 25 plantains. Thank you so much. Yes, I stole all these donation things from Brian because I don't know what they are either. Um, AJ, Jacob, expressing gratitude for all the info that you, Brian, Miles, and Wes are bringing to the PSVR 2 news table. Your opinion matters for me a lot, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I we are... I'm, I'm all about, like, you know, making sure I'm in line with, you know, as many people as possible. Sometimes... We might disagree, um, and I will stand firmly. You guys know that. I will, if I believe in opinion, I will stand by it, even if everybody hates me for it. Um, but I think that's what makes this fun, man. It's all about the analysis, the discussion, uh, everything that goes around it. It's not just like you suck, uh, burn in hell. It's it's like no, like I like this about it. Well, I don't like this about it. Well, I I also like this or think this about it. That's the important part, man. That's the that's the thing we need to change about. Uh, about kind of like gaming culture these, these days. I'm not going to get all political on us here because <laughs> that's not my thing, definitely. Uh, but there is this, you know, horrible, horrible culture of just knee-jerk reactions and and everything's the best or everything needs to die. And um, it's like, no, it's actually, it needs to be somewhere in between. Can we stop with the extremes, please? And it's not you guys, but it's, it's, it's something that, you know, I'm hoping changes as a whole. Um, Something else I was kind of going on a tangent earlier uh, on on Twitter earlier um, talking about that because just like you know just some of the some of the things nuance is a dying art that's a good metal song Niles Ryan you should make that a you should make that your next song name <laughs> eh eh ten percent ten percent over here for that <laughs> we we did it together we're a partnership um, anyways. Um, let's see here. <laughs> uh, so the other game, uh, we, we have an awesome, awesome announcement, and that is another highly anticipated upcoming title. 
Arkin Age, uh, a sci-fi action RPG from Vitruvius Games, developers behind Shadow Legend VR, which literally Brian coined the term VRAF from uh, because it was one of the very first games that just was like fully featured in terms of like all these immersive features uh, that we got. I mean, like grabbing objects, interacting with them, you know, realistically putting them places or, or interacting in some way. Um, Awesome Tatum in the house, my Crossfire Sierra Squad partner says, Arcan Age, please be good. We need it. I think uh I think Arcan Age is going to be very good, actually. Um, it looks pretty cool so far from it looks pretty good from what we've seen, all the different sci-fi weapons and everything. Um, it's supposed to be like structured like an RPG or maybe, you know, another RPG. It kind of honestly gives me like a little bit of like halo vibes a little bit i don't know why if it's the art style what it is it kind of gives me halo vibes um it looks like an xbox game uh, but um but that's that's not really uh we're not really here to talk about the game itself so much as a feature that was announced for it um which is of course uh doo -doo -doo -doo. and that is the developers have had a breakthrough here and that is uh foveated rendering and native 90 frames per second confirmed for arcan age on playstation vr2 and they did give us a a nice little picture here um showing the clarity this is the 60 to 120 frames per second reprojection you can see i don't know how well it comes through on stream but from what i can see here um it says previous resolutions at one time uh this is like a little blurry, like not really blurry, but it's a little hazy, I would say. Um, just some of the details, it's not like super sharp and crisp. While on the other side, while we have the um, uh, FSR plus gaze tracking, and you can see uh, and 90 frames per second, you can see like it's, you can see down to the pixel. I mean, down to every last little pixel in here. Uh, it looks super sharp and crisp. Um, obviously, this isn't like a like a real representation. Actually, there is. Uh, you can't do it with this, but um, but uh, it it definitely looks like a huge difference. Um, and yeah, this is huge for this game because this is obviously a game that is uh, very very highly anticipated and hoping it's really good. Now, the developers have spent, for what it's worth, they have said that they spent the last four years making this game. Um, I remember uh, them telling us about them starting on this forever ago. I mean, it was literally like four years ago. And the idea was to make, you know, that was everyone's biggest complaint about uh, Shadow Legend was that it was a little bit on the short side. It was like four hours and it was done. Um, that was the only drawback with that. So I think they took that to heart. They made it not only where they wanted to create a badass game, but make it a full length featured game. So um, I think I've heard, I don't, don't quote me on this, but I've heard rumors about maybe a, a, at least a 10 hour game, something like that. That would be great. Uh, even more obviously would be better. Um, but there's a lot of features in this. The enemies looks like the bosses or something, uh, weapons, customization, all sorts of stuff. So this is uh, this game is looking awesome, and I really look forward to it. And now we can look forward to it in uh, eye track foveated rendering, DFR, and 90 frames per second. Um, super cool, super very very exciting. Um, so so far on the foveated rendering games cast or foveated rendering chat, uh, we've got Madison VR confirmed, LoFi confirmed. Arcan Age confirmed, which brings us to our main headline of the evening. And that is, of course, Hellsweeper launched today, guys. Hellsweeper. <laughs> um, actually, obviously, Hellsweeper didn't actually launch today, um, but it did for me, and it did for a lot of people out there um, because Hellsweeper, after a long uh, long awaited update has now gotten, you guessed it, dynamic foveated rendering. 
Um, I've got a trailer running right here. I'm going to actually bring up my own gameplay footage as well. There might be some audio for just a split second. Um, if so, I apologize. I will get it muted uh, as soon as possible here. Uh, let's see here. Boom. Okay. Um, so Hellsweeper got the long awaited dynamic foveated rendering update. I'm going to go ahead and just leave this sucker full screen because it's so beautiful. And that's exactly what it is, man. Uh, this update is the one that we've been waiting a very, very, very long time for. This is one of my has been one of my most anticipated games. As you guys know, I was a huge fan and supporter of the original Sirento that made by Mixed Realms. Um, has some of the most amazing gameplay, um, but you know, Sirento lacked some content, like a good game loop. It ended up being very much like an arena fighter. Um, they they doubled down on all their fighting and enemies and weapons and everything, and they've turned this into a roguelike. Now, what I love about this game is like while the roguelike mechanics are kind of apparent, it's it doesn't feel like I'm playing a roguelike. It just feels like I'm playing just some badass action game. Um, and for the record, guys, this footage uh, was my first impressions of this. It's I've just started the game and. Um, and there's a lot of menus and stuff, a lot of settings that I can go in and turn off. Uh, you know, I need to go in and turn off a lot of these like uh, health bars and all this stuff. So if you see that popping up and that's bothersome, I apologize. Um, that's not good. I'm going to turn that off once I actually uh, go back into it. But guys, Hell Sweeper is finally here and it is freaking Glorious. It is the game that I've been waiting for since it was first announced, since I've been following this game for years now, literally years. I've been following this game, waiting for it to come out. And, uh, you know, Devil May Cry is one of my favorite games of all time. And this is finally my Devil May Cry in VR experience. Of course, it's its own thing, but it just happens to share the commonality of having guns and swords and demons and, and jumping up and backflipping and slicing. And oh my God, it feels so good. And now it looks good too. Um, this game is incredible, you guys, and I have a lot to play, um, a lot more to play, kind of some of the mechanics starting out here in this roguelike mode. It's just kind of teaching me some of the basics. I really suck right now, so that's, I will get a lot better at this game, but, uh, you know, there's, there is a learning curve. The, the controls are very intuitive, uh, as you would expect from the Sirento devs. Uh, the controls are very, very intuitive. Everything feels like you know, the button that your instinct tells you to press to do an action is the button that you end up like pressing just by instinct. And, and that shows me that, yeah, this is very good intuitive design. Um, there's also a lot of different like moves and features and, and stuff. Um, I love that you have guns and swords and different melee weapons and you have magic and you have these crazy like abilities, like demon power things. Uh, you can pick up, you can like, uh, spawn rocks from the ground and throw them at enemies and 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 there's all this like uh there's a pretty good gore and dismemberment system as well um i think that bodes really really well with a demon slaying game um it is it is awesome man uh i have thoroughly enjoyed this this uh kind of what's going on here is i'm playing the roguelike mode where I'm kind of learning the basics. There's a couple different like mechanics to some of the the stages that you revolve or, that revolve around. Um, this one is you're supposed to. It was just wanting me to basically break that statue, um, and then once you once you uh, break the statue, then you can just eliminate all the enemies. If you don't break the statue, they'll just keep spawning and spawning and um, until you eventually die. There's a couple other modes that have like like little different puzzles and and things you have to do. Kind of like uh, like I said, I like that there's fleshed out gameplay mechanics. I am, for those who know me, or uh, like I am obsessed. For those who don't know me, I am obsessed with gameplay systems and gameplay mechanics and and things like that and controls and and like that's kind of and like level design that's the stuff that i really pay attention to the most i know some people you know look at different things but i i look at all those things and this game uh has a solid core gameplay uh and then some nice little fleshed out mechanics around it uh to make it really really enjoyable 
Um, but yeah, there's like there's a little preview of like you know spawning the rocks from the ground. Um, but there's actually some. Oh, I'm running uh, two videos at once. Let's get rid of one of those. Uh, what is playing? Hell sweep. Oh, I'm running two Hell Sweeper videos. Uh, do, do, do. There we go. I want just the gameplay running, um, so you can see what that's like. Um, <clears throat> uh, Beard of Power six six six. Does does this make you feel as badass as Synapse? Ooh, I mean, yeah, but in a completely different way. I think Synapse makes you feel like a badass because you're like an OP uh, psychic um, uh, operative, like like um, yeah, like a, um, a secret agent or something, like a like a psychic secret agent uh, with with you know the, you you're like basically Magneto and Darth Vader in. Um, in synapse so you feel like really overpowered i mean combining those two just imagine um this is more of a badass in a twitchy gameplay like easy to learn hard to master kind of way again gonna make a lot of comparisons to devil may cry here because that's basically what this like feels like to me in terms of like the way it works mechanically and gameplay wise um uh, you know the 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 swapping between swords and guns and everything um but my experience uh so this isn't the first time i've played this game this game does also have co-op um and when i played it before like the graphics were so disappointing i mean they were horrid at launch they were terrible um but then uh they did do a quick update for it that made it a little bit better but it still looked like a psvr1 game now this looks like a true next gen like high-end pc style game graphically it is beautiful it is so sharp and crisp um it, the colors the lighting the the polish on it it all looks phenomenal and on top of that it's got this really nice like you know physics based combat that is just like visceral as hell um it is it is really, really good stuff so far, and uh, I've got a lot to play. Like, I'm just getting, I just scratched the surface with this game, um, and so, like, I'm just getting started with it. I got a long way to go, but um, they did bring back, of course, some of these lovely mechanics from Sirento. Things like being able to teleport, uh, or, like, jump, I mean, sorry, <clears throat> where you can, like, double jump, you can do backflips, and uh, let me tell you, it is one hell of a feeling to like be upside down shooting a demon's head off uh, in VR. I mean, this shit is why I play VR. Like, this is like the this is like VR to the extreme for me. Um, any hardcore gamer uh, is gonna really, really love this. I don't I don't know if there's like I think there's difficulty options. Yeah, there's difficulty options. So it's more accessible. But yeah, man, you haven't experienced VR properly until you've done a backflip and, and blown a demon's head off upside down. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I hate that I didn't have all these like menus and icons. You can turn off a lot of this stuff. Um, this is a cool ability too. I can't wait to use. There's so much to do. I like so I've got a full game here. I'm going to be playing this as much as possible soon. Um, this and and um, old Dart says, anyone get motion sick from this game? I don't know. I mean, you, the way they got around Sony certification was that I think they have the backflips turned off by default, and then, and then you can turn them on to enable them. Um, Mzadi says, how long is Hellsweeper? I mean, I know you can spend several, several hours with it. I don't actually know uh, the average length of this game because to be quite honest with you, I have avoided it at all costs or tried to at least um, until this patch came out. So I will, I'm sure there's an answer for that somewhere, <clears throat> but if you want to, if you want to get it for me, then uh, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. It is a roguelite though. Um, the virtual resistance, what up homie, says uh, I haven't beat the second boss and he's in 10 hours. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, there was, a, there was actually an interesting article. Um, let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Uh, the developers uh, have gone above and beyond here. Um, and uh, this is a game that's currently on sale. Um, but the developers actually wrote a really, really nice uh, post on, I think, Reddit here. 
Um, let's see here. And they, they actually had some really cool stuff to share here. And as the theme of the, just like the theme of the rest of this show, um, let's go ahead and hide this real quick. Uh, and let's bring up the browser. Um, the developers have said on Reddit, um, we finally made dynamic foveated rendering to work on our recent update for Hellsweeper VR. It runs natively 90 frames per second with no reprojection. To those who believed in us and those who pushed us to do better from this sub, thank you. Um, they've got a little before and after. Oh, I can't wait to unlock my, my Demon Wolf. Um, man, I, if like... If the whole Devil May Cry like similarities wasn't enough, like having like a pet wolf, like I'm such an animal lover and I and I love dogs and cats, of course. Um, but I love dogs, I love wolves, and uh to have a pet wolf too, I cannot wait to get that unlocked there. Um But uh there's a little bit of an interesting article here uh that they posted about. Um, they said, we are Mixed Realms, the developers behind Hellsweeper VR. In our recent update featuring phase two of the graphics enhancements uh, we promised for PSVR 2 is now live. Along with new content, this update introduces dynamic foveated rendering, enabling us to enhance graphics significantly. Thanks to DFR, we've been able to increase the render resolution, improve some textures, virtual effects, and shadows. And the shadows do look really good in this. Um, perhaps the most notable notice improvement is the clarity um, this is very true the game still runs natively at 90 frames per second without any need for reprojection the foveated rendering was a game changer by itself but being able to implement eye tracking enabled us to unlock more options beyond just optimization like being able to use eye tracking as part of the telekinesis mechanics in the game okay interesting i did not know this so not only can you use eye tracking for the graphical clarity, but you, they actually have it applied as a telekinesis mechanic as well. Very interesting. I have not seen this yet. The whole process took our team about six months, which seems to be about kind of about the average, it seems. Uh, with a lot of trial and error, we switched to a newer un version of Unity, transitioned from the standard pipeline to the universal render pipeline, updated all lighting and shaders, and reworked elements incompatible with our new workflow. Essentially, we had to dismantle the game to rebuild it better. We probably wouldn't go through it uh, again, but we're grateful we did. Although we won't reach this epicness of No Man's Sky, they were one of our biggest inspirations during this whole process. Whenever we failed in our fixes, we played this game and psyched ourselves to try harder. It was our hopium. <laughs> Finally, we'd like to thank the PSVR 2 community, those who challenged us to do better, and those who stood by us and never stopped, never stop believing. Uh, we could do it. Thank you. If you have any questions about Hell Sweeper, this update uh, with our experience while working on the game, we'll be happy to answer them. Um, and then they make a nice little note here at the bottom. They say, to any other small studio slash indie dev caught in the unity transition we don't claim to be experts but we'd like to share what we learned during this process with a small team coming off an older unity workflow we had to figure out a lot of things by trial and error going through platform and engine documentations and finding tutorials by really awesome devs buried in forums and other subs we're compiling all these resources we intend to publish and we intend to publish them. We hope this can support and inspire other small teams to create more content, not just for PSVR 2, but for VR in general. So after a very long time, I've been waiting to do this for a long time for Mixed Realms. Good job, devs. Um, thank you for doing this for us. Uh, you know, I still bought the game at launch, uh, but I haven't played it. I mean, I did play it like once, okay. Uh, once or twice. <laughs> but I basically didn't play it. Um, so this is now, to me, this is the official launch for this. And I love that, um, I love that they are, you know, sending a message out there to other developers that like, you know, they want to, um, they want to sp spread the knowledge around. I think I think that's really, really important. I know not every developer wants to or has to or anything, but it's not about like wanting to or having to. It's it's really 
it means a lot that you do do that and and sharing knowledge um with with vr having being so so new um really a lot of developers out there could use some help and and sharing this kind of knowledge is super super important and it's a very selfless act that is very much appreciated um if i don't know if if uh so so i mean i can't recommend this game enough uh you know for for people out there wondering about it this is the time to buy hell sweeper uh now is the time you need to experience doing backflips and shooting off demon heads upside down um it's amazing um but uh but yeah awesome shit man awesome stuff i've been waiting so long for this and now uh, I'll probably be playing this all night if I get the chance or the time because um, I've got a lot of catching up to do with this. But I'll tell you what, the wait feels like it was worth it because this is this is something I that really this game really meant a lot to me. Um, I've waited basically five years for this game and uh, I'm excited to finally get to have the experience that, you know, I was originally promised and um, or at least expected at the very least. And, uh, you know, I was willing to be kind of patient and wait it out. Um, and now I'm ready, man. Woo, that is awesome, you guys. But we're not uh, done yet. So now it is time to be uh, uh, now it's time to go into the PlayStation VR 2 sale and uh, break down, give you the thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, before we move on, though, let's see here. Uh, could this be DJ Disco Beaver once again says, could this be the watershed moment with the quality of PSVR 2 improving? Well, this is a um, this is definitely a pivotal time and for PSVR 2. Uh, it's a really important time because obviously the sales slowed down. Like, you know, launch was fine, but sales immediately slowed down uh, as the year went on. And um, uh, let me see, uh, Macho, here. Here you go, Macho. Um, I got you, homie. Um, Macho's, oh, I can't I, I can't share it from here, Macho, but I'll send it to you after. Just remind me. Um, here, I'll make a note. Macho Hellsweeper article. Um but uh but this is a you know this is a really pivotal time. I you know I have I want to have a big discussion about like the state of PR, PSVR2 at some point. Kind of talk about like where it is, where we think it is, where what we know about it and and um you know what we think it need like what direction it needs to go next. I already talked about this a little bit earlier um actually. So I kind of already got it out of the way, but but to your point um this is this is the cool thing about where we're at right now and where we are going to be. And that is that one year of PSVR 2 is already in the books. Um, you know, there was a, obviously uh, a lot of things going on at Sony right now that have complicated things. Um, there's new management that's going to be, you know, coming in. Uh, obviously, the last management kind of fumbled the psvr2 launch pretty hard um but psvr2 is is not um it's not going anywhere just yet i don't think and and uh i fully believe that sony i i think that the reason sony is kind of being slow to react in some ways is because i think they have time to i think they know that they have time to um you know them doing like stuff like stopping the production um I don't know if that mean you know that could mean a multitude of things that I don't think I don't think that means that they're just going to like that they're stopping uh, production permanently. No, that's not the case. Um, what I do think it means is that they're kind of like being patient. They're trying to play the patient game. You know, they want to occupy a space in VR. There's a lot of people at Sony that care a lot about VR. Maybe not Jim Ryan, but there's a lot of other people. Um, you know, like like your Shoe Hayes and your Christian Svensons and um, uh, uh, um, Craig Malanka and and stuff. And they like, there's a lot of people, so many more people uh, other than that too. Like so many, um, they're just they're in a weird spot right now where again they have a lot more competition than than they used to, and um, that competition is taking a big chunk out of them, and so. They have to kind of reassess things and reset. You know, I don't know. There's so many different things that could happen. Um, it could be, you know, they they could do eventually do a price cut. 
Um, you know, PC support is coming. Um, they could eventually do a price cut, like I said. Uh, they could release a second model. I know this sounds crazy, but they could release a second model of PSVR 2 that's cheaper and and has like, you know, uh, uh, pancake lenses and things like that, you know, addressing a lot of the, the, the concerns that people had about the first headset. I mean, we've seen them do this with things like the PS three and 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 like they always release like they later on they release a pro model or a or a slim model they could do you know they could actually do like some kind of uh uh v2 the the original playstation vr had a version 2 that came out and it had a redesigned cable and and like some just better uh better features to it um it was like a lighter cable or something i think it was yeah it didn't have that big control box uh hanging from you that felt heavier um um but uh but yeah there's uh there's a, a a bunch of different possibilities and i think sony's just kind of writing it out right now um they're starting with pc support uh maybe uh maybe they you know to consider a redesign of the headset to fix some of the the kind of like uh issues um, you know, the, I don't know. There's there's a lot of things, but I will remain optimistic because at this time, um, VR PSVR two is is getting a lot of games right now. There's there's a lot of stuff that's been in development for several years um, that's just now dropping. Um, a lot of stuff we don't know about. There's a lot of stuff we do know about. We've got big IPs like Metro uh, coming out, and uh, you know, there's some big indie stuff like wander fragments of fate that you know uh i think are gonna it's gonna at least keep the current player base satisfied and then stuff like pc support where people can you know they can jump onto their um they can they can jump off of resident evil 4 and go play half-life alex or unreal engine vr potentially and like that's that's a big deal man these are uh, the thing is man a lot of the stuff that gets talked about is not usually the positive stuff. Um, and unfortunately that does have a negative impact and that is on, that is up to Sony to overcome that. Um, and again, with new leadership coming, we don't know what Sony's looking like right now. What's happened is that the, we're seeing a, a, a big impact on the entire games industry right now. There was a there was obviously a big increase in workforce and everything during COVID when there was a, a lot of people were inside playing games. Now that's shifted back, and we're seeing the kind of uh, the aftermath of that. Uh, and and it's and it's been rough, man. It's it's been really really rough on the games industry. So now more than ever has it been never been more important to be very supportive, to be very vocal, uh, to be very patient and understanding um, with a lot of this. I mean, tens of 10,000 people just lost their jobs. Um, and and it sucks, man. It, it really, really sucks. And it's not just VR. The thing is, is that every single big company right now, because they uh they hired on uh tons of workforce now they've had it's led to mass layoffs unfortunately because the gaming industry um gaming sales and and uh everything have kind of uh uh, uh reduced a little bit so they've had to reduce the workforce along with it again you know because vr is a little bit smaller it feels like the impact is more because it's already a smaller market and so it was it felt like it was it felt like it was making tons more progress than it actually was um but what i can say is that just like the beginning uh you know playstation vr and and the oculus uh dk1 and stuff uh you know even before that it's all it's always been since those have come around that's been like the start of mainstream vr and it's always been a slow organic growth to it it's always been a slow growth to it um you know the the biggest thing the biggest jump or spike that we've seen with with uh vr taking off with the mainstream was the quest 2 uh because it was so cheap and that's going to be something that will eventually help a lot of people get into vr in the future because there's a lot of people that just want to play stuff and experience stuff. Um, you know, those people, there's a lot more of those people than there are like hardcore gamers like us. Uh, and 
uh, there will be more of us in the future. Um, but right now, you know, as the core audience, you know, we're, we're a hardcore gamer audience. And that's really kind of the smallest market for VR right now. Um, but that will grow and that will continue to grow so long as developers keep, you know, evolving the tech uh, and the and, and uh, the software keeps getting better and better. I've mentioned earlier that like these indie games that have come out in the past three months have been phenomenal. Um, everything from Legendary Tales to to um, just like a bunch of them. Man, Cube is is really a remarkable game. And um now we've got, you know, some of these smaller studios, smaller indie devs that are starting to make some amazing stuff, too. And, and you know, we've got some big titles later, like uh, Behemoth coming out. That's going to be really, really big. Uh, shout out to Cerebral Frost in the chat. I see you. Um, and Looper saw the leaked uh, pixel remaster of Behemoth. <laughs> what up, Looper? Um, but, yeah, man, it's it, like the whole first five years of PlayStation VR 2 was very much... Uh, it was a slow burn. It was a slow growing thing. We're getting a much, we're getting a lot more better games at a much more rapid pace right now. And, and, and I do think that's going to, I, th I do think that's going to come in clusters. I think it, there will be little lulls, little downtime, uh, in between where we'll, we, we won't be getting like releases, you know, um, we won't, but if you look at last year, I mean, even for the first year, it was kind of like we at least got pretty much at least one banger a month, it seemed like, um, or at least one solid title a month. And, you know, I think that's the that's the realistic expectation is to expect maybe like one solid title a month at least. Um, and then some, it'll just explode and there'll be like five games, five amazing games in one month or something because that's just how it happens sometimes. But um, but I'm really excited about, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about where the VR industry is. The VR industry is profitable. I've spoken with like so many different developers and they have told me time and time again that it is profitable, that there are companies out there making money. Now, obviously not everyone's going to have the same levels of success. Some people spend more on their games. Uh, some people, you know, um, they, they just don't sell as well as others or they or or some that you know sell they don't spend a lot of money but they sell a lot more you know if you look at like beat saber like beat saber is like a pretty much a billion dollar uh like ip um and that was made that was started by like two or three people or whatever um there's there's going to be occasional like you know some more one hit wonders or whatever like that would be nice too um just to get people buying headsets or or uh you know familiar with vr i go to my local arcade here and and there's the first thing you see when you walk in is like a, a end dreams vr uh local local vr station and then there's like this like crazy you know, hand tracked VR ride, and then there's Beat Saber, and then there's Star Wars. Uh, it's it's pretty cool, man. Like VR, again, in my opinion, VR is already mainstream, uh, at least in terms of like people being familiar with it. Now it just needs to slowly start selling like a mainstream product. We need to, you know, it needs to be selling four times better than what it is right now, um, and it'll get there. It will get there. We're still at VR 2.0. Um, we're waiting for VR, like mo the mainstream, like I'm going to quote Sean Layden a lot because the dude's a freaking genius. Everything he says, everything he's predicted and spoken about and been public about, um, we've seen that kind of happen. He's an amazing businessman, a great creative mind. And um, I mean, I don't want to keep just harping on and how amazing he is, but you know, him and Shu and stuff, they, they know what they're, they're doing in many, many ways. Shu is much more of the creative guy um, with, uh, but, but Sean Layden was an excellent businessman as well. And, um, and uh, yeah, man, he says people want to hit that 5.0. When we get the PlayStation five, there's going to be a, I'm, I'm sorry. When we get the PSVR two PSVR five, uh, eventually uh, there's going to be one in every household. Uh, let's see here. But all right, guys, it is time. That is the end of my rant. Um, it is time to run through this, uh, sale now. Um, just had to get that off my chest, but I appreciate each and every one of you, man. And, uh, really I'm, I'm super excited about the future. Like I said, you know, it's, 
when your expectations, when you kind of manage your expectations and, you know, we're a little bit more seasoned now, we have a year under our belts as to, you know, what the first year of PSVR 2 and that definitely had, had some rough spots, but um, we're starting to see lots of things improving. And, um, but yeah, anyways, Mark with the $5 donation. Thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate the support and love right back at you, homie. He says, where's Aces of Thunder? That's a good question. I thought Aces of Thunder was going to be announced at uh, at that last, was it a state of play? Oh, no, it was like the, the um, I, th I don't know. They said it's nearing finished, nearing being done. So uh, we'll have to wait and see unless they, you know, are going to go back and now add like, dynamic foliated rendering in 90 frames per second hopefully they're paying attention um you know that's another thing is like developers need to make sure they pay attention to what other developers are doing um that was part of the discussion we had with bj uh behind the scenes was he was saying like he was bj was shocked that not every developer um like plays other games like uh, like in and yeah we've been shocked as well like like he was like really i have like 500 games that i test and play and so i know you know the best way best mechanics and best systems and stuff and it's like yeah all this information is already in front of you you don't have to recreate the wheel in fact most of the time that was something that bit developers in the butt a lot last gen was they were just trying to like somebody had already done something and they tried to you know reinvent it their own way and it was god awful looking at you golem walking mechanics um <laughs> anyways um all right, guys, so let's get to the sale real quick. I'm going to run through it, give you the thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm just going to be using the PlayStation Store here, sorted uh, A through Z. Um, actually, this is not A through Z, uh, but let's sort it A through Z. All right, so... Um, All right, kicking things off with, uh, and this has been a long episode, so I'm going to try to just kind of rapid fire through this uh, and stop where I feel like we need to. Kicking things off with Across the Valley. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I've hardly played this game, uh, but no. I, I played this game for like five minutes, and I was like, I'm out. I don't really have any interest in this game. Um, so... It gets no recommendation from me, although it is only $7.99. That's not bad, but I don't care. I still don't have any interest to play it. Um, next, we've got A Fisherman's Tale. Now, I kind of liked A Fisherman's Tale. Um, it's kind of cool and creative at first. Uh, it, it, in unique, little story, little charming storytelling puzzle game. Um, but I'm going to say, no, I'm good. Uh, I mean... Maybe if you're desperate for a puzzle game, but I don't know. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say hold off for now on this. There's there's too much other stuff. Again, with with my when we go through this, sometimes it's the timing of the sale where I'll give a re like you know it could be the same game, same price. One sale I'll say yes. One sale I'll say, I'll say no. This one for both of these starting out, uh, I shall say no. Um, next we've got Afterlife VR. Uh, again, I haven't played this because I haven't felt like it's probably going to be worth the time. Uh, this is going to be a hard pass. No. Oh, and you guys, of course, uh, be sure to leave your thumbs up or thumbs down if you've played the game or, or disagree with me or agree with me, want to say something, um, let me know. Scott Dracula, speaking of, says, A Fisherman's Tale is art. Um, yeah, it is a nice artsy uh, definitely a nice little artsy game. I just think the I think for like a two hour game or whatever, I feel like the last section of it wasn't very good. And for such a short game, uh, and I'll make it up and I'll make it up to the 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 fisherman tail devs here in just a second. But Afterlife is no. After the fall deluxe edition, um, it kind of depends on the mood. Now, this Ghostbusters Frozen Empire just came out, <laughs> and that does have DLC. Um, I haven't played that yet though. So I would have liked to, uh, check this out. Uh, I would have liked to check out that DLC. Um, personally, I think after the fall for $15 is a good deal. Um, it's a decent game. I know it's kind of like 
it's a very 50 50 thing um the problem i have with that game is it for the best experience it does kind of require like four people so just buying it yourself like if you're a single player kind of person or you don't have four people to play it with i'd say no um but if you do like i think it's pretty decent um it ain't bad um let's see here <laughs> Oh, uh, Nick Nilo says, damn it, AJ, we need you to get a metal water bottle so you don't always use a plastic one. Metal. <laughs> I do actually have a metal water bottle, but it's uh, it's not clean right now. But you're right. I do use a lot of uh, water bottles. Um, Macho says, I played after the fall like once. It just wasn't for me. Wasted my money. Yeah, I'm I, I, after the fall is I think it's a decent game, but I'm not going to be recommending it here uh, at this time. Um, next, we've got, this might surprise some of you, but we've got a, another Fisherman's Tale for $12.99. Now, this game is just okay. It's all right. It's, it's nothing super special. It looks like a quest game. Um, but for $12.99, I, I, will, I would say, like, you know, it's, charming it's only a couple hours long so it's really short um i think i gave it i think i reviewed it and gave it like a seven um and i and i you know i think it's somewhere between the six to seven score range there was a couple moments of the game that i really really liked um but but i did kind of enjoy it overall and i i think twelve dollars twelve ninety nine is okay not a must-have uh but if you got some extra money burning a hole in your wallet and nothing else is is you're finding you like interesting um but yeah i i think it's a cute charming game um next we've got uh arizona sunshine 2 i keep putting the wrong one um arizona sunshine 2 is 34.99 now i think this game uh you know, I don't think I've said before, I don't think this game is worth fifty dollars. Um, but I think it's worth thirty dollars. So it's coming in at five dollars above my recommended price. But I will say this: um, if you want a good like five to eight hour, depending on your playtime, maybe five to six hour, um uh first person shooter with like you know zombie destruction a nice little story driven campaign um it the thing i liked about arizona sunshine is that it has some very cinematic moments um it, it has some really like cool cinematic action set piece moments so for that uh for 34.99 i will say yes but really my heart's telling me like you know this is a must have if it's like 30 or below, uh, but $5, $6, dollars difference, not that bad. I think Arizona Sunshine 2 is really high quality and a really fun campaign. The only thing that concerns me is I do hear a lot of people talking about, um, I, I do hear a lot of people talking about this game crashing on them a bit, which is kind of concerning. So that's the only thing uh, that I would maybe say hold off a little bit longer to see if they patch that, but um i don't know i didn't really have much crashing uh i don't remember actually i i think i did but i don't remember how how extensive it was and i never lost save progress so i don't know uh next we've got come to barbaria come to barbaria um barbaria is 13.99 or with playstation plus is 12.99 um i think this game is awesome um I think it's worth this price. Yes. I don't think this is like an for everybody to go out and buy. Um the uh Barbaria is an awesome game. I the replay system alone is so much fun. Um but we didn't we just get some other kind of like melee combat game that just came out that was really good. My brain is fried. Um I I think uh Okay, so Barbaria, if 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 the thought of like a kind of tower defense, uh, rogue like 
Gorn interests you, then yes. Um, Barbarian is a really good game. I just don't think it's gonna like everyone's gonna spend a bunch of time with it um hopefully if if it's your kind of game you already picked it up at this point um but i would i would if it interests you um and like kind of like a tower defense where you get to build your own stages and stuff it's also freaking hilarious it's it might be it, it might be the funniest game on the platform um it is really funny and really charming and stuff uh it's an excellent game so at that price i would recommend it uh beat the beats i haven't played i have no interest in it. maybe some people will like it whatever i don't know i don't care um before your eyes uh is 974 okay again i like before your eyes if you got an extra 10 bucks it's not that like it's pretty cool, but it's a very short kind of one and done experience. Um, and that's it. And it's all just played by blinking. Um, time to play VR says thumbs down to Barbaria. Ooh, yeah. And as much as I appreciate the technical aspect and a lot of the things Barbaria accomplishes, um, I don't I don't think it's for everybody. And I think I think I think there's a you know a small niche audience for it um and for them they'll get like tons of hours like i know miles got like tons of of hours out of barbaria i only got like a couple really like five ten maybe i don't know um which isn't bad but um so i don't know um anyways uh it wouldn't barbaria wouldn't be my first recommendation but um but i do think it's a good game uh before your eyes listen I really want to give this a thumbs up, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, time to place is I can see why people like it. It's not for me. I kind of feel like the same. Like, I really appreciate it. But it, but I, you know, I, I recommend games that I want to play, not just for being good. Um, I would, as much as I would love to recommend uh, Before Your Eyes at this price, I really should say yes, but I'm going to say no. Uh, Borderbots VR, uh, I was actually pretty impressed with this, much to my surprise. Also, like some decent humor, uh, uh, and it's very much like a kind of looks like it's kind of like job sim. It ended up being way better than I was expecting. Um, let's see here. It, it ended up being way better than I expected. Um, but that being said, I still don't really have very much interest in it. Um, so I'm going to say no, it's not a bad game. Um, but I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe if you, if maybe if uh, I don't, I, I, it's hard, it's hard to say. Cause I don't know who, I don't know who this game is for. Like, I want to say yes, because it's a good price. It's a good solid game from what I've played. Uh, but I'm going to say the hold off for right now. Uh, next, we've got Cosmo Dread for $11.99 or uh, $10.49 with PlayStation Plus. Uh, I'm probably going to take some flack for this because I know a lot of people love Cosmo Dread. Uh, but unfortunately I'm not one of them. I'm going to say no, <laughs> it's a roguelike. It's not as scary as dread halls was on last gen hardware. It's, uh, there's, there is some love for, for Cosmo dread, um, in the chat. There's also some people that agree with me. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of split. I'm going to fall into the no crowd. Uh, as much as that pains me to say, because I want to like it so much, but, um, C smash VR. Now this is a game I really need to play more of, man. I wish I could recommend this and I'd like to, but I haven't played enough of it yet. Um, I, I, I don't know how I keep forgetting this game exists. I don't know what is wrong with me. Uh, I'm actually going to make a note. I need to play more of this game. Um, like really bad. Holy crap. Wait, it's. It's 1559 and 1169. I mean, if you have if you have PlayStation Plus, um, that's a pretty damn good price. Um anybody uh Aceville in the house tonight. What up, my homie? Uh it says Cosmo Dread. Uh no, I'm sorry. It says <laughs> Dread Halls is better than Cosmo Dread. I 100 percent agree with you there. Um, um 
I want to give C Smash VRS. Uh, I'm being really picky this 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 sale. I'm I'm not usually I'm usually a little bit more liberal uh, with with these thumbs up. But I'll tell you what, man. Right now, there's just so many awesome games that are brand new that are out that are coming out. There's awesome updates to things, and plus, there's I think going to be a very special uh, golden buzzer appearance on this sale that I'm really waiting for. Um, all this is DLC. Uh, Dead Hook is $14.99 or uh, $13.99 with PlayStation Plus. Uh, no, I did not like this game. Um, for my Doom in VR experience, I'm going to wait and see how Hell Sweeper ends, ends out. <laughs> Robert the Game Cat. Rathmania, what up, homie? Says a real picky Pauline. I'm definitely being a picky Pauline this time. Hey, um, like I said, the same. It could, it's some sales, it's the same game, the same price. I'll give it a thumbs up once. I'll give it a thumbs down then. It's some of it's about the timing as well. Uh, what's going on elsewhere? What other games are on sale? Um, but yeah, uh, I think I did mean Metal Hell Singer. If I said, did I say Metal Hell Sweeper? I think that's because I might have Hell Sleeper on my mind. I'm going to really need to play that after this. Uh, next, we've got Drums Rock. Anyways, no to Dead Hook. It's, it's a bad Doom clone. Um, and it, and it, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bad Doom clone. Uh, I would say hard pass. Uh, next, we've got Drums Rock Complete Music Edition for $26.99 or $25.19. Ay. Is the. including 50 plus songs. I think I'd rather recommend, I'd rather, look, I love drums rock. Like I really do. Um, I, I don't know if I'd recommend it at this price though, even though it comes with all the content with it. Um, I think I'd recommend just getting like the base game of drums rock first and then and then kind of adding music packs to your liking. Um, but as the, I'm not really giving the thumbs down to the, to drums rock the game, just this complete music edition. Again, as Reth says, I'm being a picky Pauline today. I freaking love drums rock. I think it's an, uh, uh, an amazing game. Uh, well not wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let's take that back a little bit. I think it's really good. I think it's a great drumming game. I think it's a great, uh, you know, has great drum feel to it. Great haptics that feel like a real drum kit. I'm a drummer in real life. Um, okay. Everyone seems to be totally agreeing with me here. Excellent. It hurts, man. Doesn't it hurt? Now you know how I feel every single day, guys, where I'm like, no, don't buy it. Or no, this has this problem. And like, and I, I want to be, I just want to be like, yes, just buy it. Just buy it. It's amazing. It's, it's the best thing in the world, but you just, I just can't, man. And it hurts me. It hurts me. Now y'all share my pain too. <laughs> Anyways, let's go back. Uh, we've got... Uh, the Offspring Pack, I probably would uh, recommend the Offspring Pack because I love the Offspring. Discronia Games, I don't give a crap. Uh, Fantavision, um, I mean, Discronia, if you want a, uh, a visual novel, sure, if you're into that kind of thing. Otherwise, no. Um, Fantavision, no. Uh, I like the concept of it, but it's just not fun. Um, let's see here. Uh, Ghostbusters, full containment edition upgrade. Oh, that's just the season pass. <laughs> god damn it uh 1121 i i don't know um but ghostbusters rise of the ghost lord is 1979 that's actually 20 bucks is not a bad price but i gotta tell you i really need to play the the new dlc for the ghostbusters dropped today um i went and i i've already seen the new movie and it wasn't bad like it actually it's not nothing's gonna ever come close to the original um but i actually thought the new mo movie was actually kind of enjoyable a little bit um but uh let's see here time to play says does anybody play ghostbusters can you get a game going uh if you join that online you'll probably get a lot of younger kids on the quest or something um I've played it mostly solo, and some of it's not designed to play solo. The thing is, is that I actually liked the Slimer DLC. Um, that was actually pretty fun. And they've added five new game modes. They've added original weapons. They've added more stuff with uh, uh, race dance. Uh, 
so I really need to check that out before I give the full recommendation on this. Um, I wish it was better because it'd be like such an easy yes. Um, but I'm going to say hold off for now. Uh, next, we have Gran Turismo 7 for $39.89. Okay, remember how I told you to say no to all those other games? One of the reasons is because you should buy Gran Turismo. You should already have Gran Turismo. I have, I think, 270 people on my friends list that, that have the game already. Um, and uh, so most of you probably have Gran Turismo already. But yeah, if you don't have a controller, I mean, if you don't have a racing wheel, it doesn't matter. You still need to play it. Um, it's good with the, it's it's got the, uh, the motion control thing or whatever. Um, uh, but dude, every, like Gran Turismo is a 10 out of 10. Like you, you need that game. Um, one of the, the most immersive VR experience I've ever had in my life. Uh, yes, big yes to that. Um, Hello Neighbor Search and Rescue is fourteen ninety nine. I don't even care what the price of with PlayStation Plus is uh, because it's still a hard pass uh, on Search and Rescue. No, it was no, it was terrible at launch. I think they did patch it, but I don't care. Which brings us to the next game, you guys. It is my golden buzzer game. Hell Sweeper VR is 34% off. It is $19.79 right now. Buy, 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 buy Hell Sweeper, guys. Let's reward these devs uh, for, for updating it. Make sure you go in there and you hit that five stars too. Let's boost the shit out of this game. Uh, they they're finally, I know, I know it's been a while. I know it was in the dreaded wait for a folder patch, uh, uh, wait for a patch folder. Um, but after playing, you know, some Hell Sweeper tonight, this is my golden buzzer of the night. This is, if you're going to buy one game from this entire sale, Hell Sweeper for $20. Yes, absolutely. Yes, you have to play this. Uh, it is amazing so far, and I can't wait to play any, uh, I can't wait to play some more. Um, this is, uh, you know, obviously you got to be like into like action and shooting and sword fighting and stuff. Um, but it is time. It is finally time, Rethmania. It is the time. This is the golden buzzer. Whoop, whoop. Uh, this is the one game, if any, that you have to buy uh, from this sale today. Um, I'm, you know, I already bought the game back then, so I don't know. Um, next, we've got Horizon Call of the Mountain. Um, 40 bucks. 40 bucks ain't bad for Horizon. Um, you know, I don't like I don't like the gameplay of this game at all. Uh but it is stunning. It does have some stuff that you can stick some family into. Uh it is a nice tech demo uh kind of game. It's kind of expensive for a tech demo. Listen, y'all know that I'm pretty disappointed in Horizon Call of the Mountain. I think it I think it was a big fumble uh and could have been so much better. Um but that being said, you also got to kind of recognize what it does do, and it does do some some cool things. Um, I'm with you there. Time to play VR says I might jump into Horizon for thirty. Yeah, man, this is not. I don't think Horizon is a must-have by any means. I think the one redeeming factor, uh, the one redeeming factor about Horizon is that the second half of the game is a lot more fun uh, than the first half. Um, it starts off great and then it immediately becomes just boring slog and then and then it actually gets kind of cool towards the end um i think i think you could really pass on horizon i don't think it's a must have um but for forty dollars i i i probably would recommend it um for forty dollars on sale uh but by no means uh it is nowhere near like a must have or must play in my opinion i hate the climbing and i hate the Dude, you know what's so funny, man? If you go back and watch the trailer for Horizon, if you go back and watch the trailer for Horizon, it's literally like stuff blowing up left and right, and all you see is hands climb, like just grabbing surfaces. It's literally like explosions and all this stuff happening, and like and like literally all the gameplay consists is just doing this, and it's just like, why, why? God, they screwed this up so bad, man. It's it's. I think I'm done talking about Horizon. I'm gonna say no. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, anyways, uh, we've got Hubris for 17.99. Hold up, 17.99. Are 
are fourteen ninety nine with uh, PlayStation Plus. Um, hey man, I like Hubris. I like Hubris a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say a big thumbs up to Hubris. Listen, the one thing you gotta know about it is like it's kind of generic sci-fi, um, but it's a really pretty game. Um, like generic sci-fi story and characters, um, but it's got you know it's got some nice graphics. It's got really cool like d diverse gameplay mechanics. I when I first played uh, Hubris, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I was like really excited about it. It's just a five hour fun five hour sci-fi adventure, um, and uh, I would highly highly recommend it for fifteen fourteen dollars was it. Um, yeah, fifteen dollars with PlayStation Plus. Yeah, that's a that's definitely a yes for me. Uh, humanity is uh twenty dollars, or you can get it with PlayStation uh, Premium Extra, whatever PlayStation Extra subscription. Um, I would just get it that way, really. Um, it's I. Uh, I liked Humanity, but I have no desire to go back and finish it. But it is it is a lot of content in it, and it's actually pretty good. Um, it's just too many of the same kind of puzzles over and over and over for me, uh, where like several hours later, I was just like done with it. Um, but it is really good though. It's just not for me. Um, next we've got journey to foundation for 1999. Um, you know, I never finished journey to foundation because it kind of had some, I ran into some bugs. Uh, I was liking Journey to Foundation, but I wasn't loving it. You could do worse with twenty bucks, um, and and I think uh, I think it had some cool things. I I don't know. Did they ever patch it to where it? I don't know if Journey to Foundation ever patched its like graphical issues. Like it had some performance issues, kinds of things. And uh, if it ever patched that, then maybe. But basically, just know that. The game is basically all talking. Um, it is ninety nine percent talking, and then like a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of gameplay that's really not that great. Um, thank you, old Darth. Uh, uh, Macho says no to Journey to Foundation. Yeah, it it was okay. Like it's it's not that bad. It's just really slow burn and. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a it's a slow burn and it's got some issues. So I'd say hold off for now. Um, Jurassic World Aftermath for eleven ninety nine. I hate this game so much. <laughs> Nansa says it sounds like a no with your description. Probably a no then. Um, I hate this Jurassic Park game so much. I think it's so terrible. Um, I, I know like one or two people that like it. Um, I think it sucks really bad. It's boring. It looks like, it looks like uh, really bad. Um, it, it has really simple, boring gameplay mechanics. Like, I uh, just, no, hard, hard pass. Two, two thumbs down. I really hate this game. And I hate the Jurassic Park IP, what it's become. Um, <laughs> this go, this is getting personal. It's getting personal. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I that game sucks. Uh, anyways, kill it with fire. Um, not necessarily like a yeah yeah. I'm, listen, I'm not going to describe this too much. No, to kill it with fire. Um, it's boring. And uh, the last labyrinth. Hell no. Um, that is an absolutely no. But you know what's not a no is Moss Book Two. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Moss uh, Book One uh, for twelve ninety nine. Listen, y'all know I love Quill. I'm a champion for Quill and Moss. Seriously, Moss is one of the richest VR games you could ever play. I will seriously, like how many times do I got to tell y'all? I've been saying it since 2018. Moss is a must play then, and it is still a must play now. You need to buy Moss if you haven't played it. It's incredible. It's so amazing. It's a wonderful little mouse story, fantasy uh, puzzle hack and slash kind of game. You have to have Moss. Uh, it's it's beautiful. It made me cry. Um, 
And uh, Quill's like the ultimate like VR mascot besides Astrobot. Those are the two top tier VR mascots. Um, there's this game called No Man's Sky. I haven't really heard of it. Um, I don't know much about it, but I hear it's really good. Uh, so for $29.99, uh, I'd like to say yes. I mean, look, I'm going to give a yes to No Man's Sky for $29.99. But truth is, you just need a physical dis- edition that you can get for dirt. You can get a physical edition of No Man's Sky for 5 10 bucks somewhere. So just go get that. Um, but that being said, No Man's Sky. Here, let me... Um, let me roll this footage. Um, no Man's Sky is absolutely incredible. It's a huge sandbox game that you... I've been playing No Man's Sky for... What year is it? Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what year it is anymore. Um, I've been playing No Man's Sky for a very, very long time. Um, I think eight years, seven years. Uh, not many games... There's not many games you can play for like seven years. Um, okay, well... Granted, I didn't play it every single day, every single year, but um, I've been playing it across the span of eight years, but or seven years. Um, but yeah, this is for those who missed it earlier. This is a look at the latest update, which is the new space stations. Listen, if you like sandbox games, absolutely recommend this. If you like multiplayer and driving around, explore. If you like exploration, space exploration, flying in a ship, listen. Buy No Man's Sky. Buy No Man's Sky. I don't care if you don't play it. Just buy it. <laughs> um amazing game. Uh but let's see here. I hope that uh I hope that Light No Fire gets VR support. Hello games do really like VR. Um not for broadcast VR. Uh I haven't played this so I'm not going to I can't really give you a recommendation or not. Um Organ Quarter, I know some people really like this, but listen, we've got better horror games out now. I I, I mean I, I completely acknowledge that some of you out there like Organ Quarter, that there's kind of a nostalgia that you have that it triggers. Um, that, you know, it kind of gives you like indie, creative, innovative Silent Hill vibes. And I don't know, maybe you just like putting your head into a giant butthole television. Um, but <laughs> hey, we all have our vices, okay? Um, I I don't I, I don't like uh I don't like Oregon Quarter, so I'm gonna say no. Um let's see here. Uh and there's and there's better options. I would say get over dark over that. Um I'd say get over dark, get uh get over dark over uh Oregon Quarter or get uh Propagation Paradise Hotel, which I think is actually also on sale. Um Pistol Whip is 20. 99 now i now i don't know if i don't know <laughs> shades of gray matter lots of people apparently like sticking their head in butthole televisions or television buttholes or whatever <laughs> uh, awesome tatum don't make me time you out <laughs> don't make me time out my squad mate okay but i will put you in time out <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> He's like he's getting he's taking jabs at all the No Man's Sky players while he can. It's okay. You're allowed to, Awesome Tatum. You get a you get a hall pass, but not but nobody else would I would treat that way. Anyone else would be would get a timeout. So that's how you know we're friends. That's how you know I like you. Just so you know, <laughs> I let you say bad things about No Man's Sky. Um. Anyways, um, Magnum Gaming says, do you think Light No Fire will get a VR port day one? That'd be amazing. Um, I don't think so, but that would be really cool. Um, who knows? I mean, if it uses the same engine, if they have the same thing, um, pistol whip is 20 99. Um, you know, obviously pistol whip is more about the, uh, it's, it's more about the experience than it is the longevity of it. Like it doesn't have the longest legs, but it is really fun to jump back into. I love the headset rumble, the updated graphics. Um, Pistol Whip is pretty sweet, man. And um, although I wish it was $19.99, I'm not going to fight over a dollar difference. Uh, Pistol Whip, you got I got to give Pistol Whip a thumbs up, man. Uh, like, I, I've got the Platinum in that game. I had a blast with it. It, it was so much fun. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight for Pistol Whip in most cases. So uh, I'm going to have to say yes to that, even though it's a little bit more than what I would want to pay. Um, that, that's an easy yes. 
Pixel Ripped, 1995. Ooh, 1399. Or uh 1199. If you have uh some super if you want some Super Nintendo nostalgia, uh some Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, uh kind of nostalgia. I, uh, you play some Castlevania and VR kind of stuff. I, I think uh, I think Pixel Ripped 1995 is pretty good. Um, it's not going to be for everybody, and some people might find it boring or uninteresting. But hell, if if you grew up on like like Nintendo NES SNES like I did, um, then uh, then I'm gonna have to recommend it. I actually really like the remastered version. I think it's pretty good. And if you're like, if you want it to be really difficult, they did add a hardcore mode too. Uh, so if you want some difficulty with it, oh, dude, look at this. Look at this space station. Look at this, man. How can you say no to this awesome Tatum? Look at this freaking space station, man. I'm going to leave this running for the rest of the and 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 virtual strangers in the house. Look at this space station. How do you not love this? Um, I'm just kidding. Dude, oh, look at that shot. Oh, my God. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. How can you not love that? Like we get that in VR, guys. We how how can you be so who hurt you <laughs> that you cannot appreciate the view that you are seeing right there? <laughs> uh that's 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 so freaking beautiful looking. Anyways, um uh let's see here. So we I'm getting off track here. This show's going on forever. This is like probably my longest interactive chat. <laughs> you watch <laughs> West of the Watch No Man's Sky like regular dudes watch porn. Yeah, probably. I mean, I guess, yeah. I I do sit and stare at the, you know, at, at No Man's Sky quite a bit. And I go, oh, oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yep. No, no, it's true. It's true. I like No Man's Sky that much. Um, anyways, uh, we've got... So I actually would give a thumbs up to uh, Pixel Rip 1995. I think it's pretty awesome. Um, again, not going to be for everybody. Uh, not not the, you know not going to blow you away, but it's I think it's pretty good. Hold on one second. I got to cough. I've been talking so much. Ah, oh, my throat was dry. Okay. We got to wrap it up here soon. Um, Project Wee Man, Frontline 69. Hell no. This game can suck it. Uh, the game sucks. Um, and it's, yeah, no, would not recommend. Uh, cheap, lazy, cash grab devs. Everything that everybody always says about every other dev. This is the, the, the actual one like that. Um, but here we go, man. Here we go propagation paradise hotel remember when i told you to skip sticking your head into a television's butthole yeah that's because propagation paradise hotel is on sale for 13.99 two thumbs up if you love horror two thumbs up uh f what can i say about this game that i haven't said already man it's it's four hours long yes uh but it's pretty cheap it's super high quality. It's very intuitive controls, interactive. There's boss fights. Um, and uh, it's basically the closest thing we have to Resident Evil 1 in VR. Cannot recommend it enough. And I love you so much, chat, uh, that you all agree with me. Um, that's why you my homies. That's why you That's why you the homies. Um, God, that game's so good. Also, it's a little scary. So just a warning. Uh, I... Definitely was pretty stressed and scared uh, playing it. <laughs> uh, Wanna Dev's other video game here, Ragnarok VR, is twelve forty nine. Um, I know some people really like this game, and that's great and all. I am not one of those people, however. Thumbs down. Buy Propagation Paradise Hotel. That's a much better game. I just I don't like the mechanics of Ragnarok. I think it it feels like lifeless whack a mole. The best thing about it it has going for it. Is that it's got good music, um, but I don't like the whack-a-mole gameplay, <clears throat> and I don't like the graphics. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, anyways, moving on here. Uh, let's see here. Next, we've got ooh, Red Matter Collection for thirty dollars. This includes Red Matter One and Red Matter Two. Yes, big. 
like an, an, we're talking another must have title here you're getting a steal from this sale guys all those games i i no longer feel bad about telling you no for all those games i said no to uh because we're certainly making up for it here with some good shit red matter one and two freaking phenomenal absolute must have go play red matter and go play red matter two uh phenomenal games um absolutely amazing sci-fi uh puzzle adventures um and that's coming from the guy that hates puzzles resident evil 7 gold edition and village gold edition uh well this doesn't really apply to all of psvr uh two so we're just going to skip that one for now although you should have both of those um if you have a psvr one and a psvr two uh next we got ooh res infinite for 1979 Guys, it has finally happened. This game is always, unless I'm mistaken, Res is always, always on sale for $25. And I'm like, come on, guys, just knock off five more dollars, please. Just five more dollars. Now, if you have the original game, you you can actually get, I think it's a $10 upgrade. Um, so there might be a better path for that. But guys, Res Infinite, hear me out. Res Infinite enable the eye tracking it's control type four i have a video of it uh, of how to enable it you gotta play res infinite with eye tracking and i want to talk to samson uh because he was at the game cap meetup dancing playing <laughs> playing res infinite for the first he was playing psvr2 for the first time and he was playing res infinite and he was getting all into it uh, i got video footage it's in our discord check it out if, if you see a dude doing like this <laughs> that's him playing res infinite having a great time res infinite to me is all about the sharp graphics the you know uh the i sharp graphics uh upgrade and the and the um high resolution and the eye tracking gameplay the eye tracking feels so next gen with that some of the best eye tracking mechanics uh for gameplay um uh i'm gonna actually uh, highly highly recommend uh, uh res infinite for twenty dollars Go play the whole game with eye tracking on. There's a lot of content there too. Um, great game, great experience, beautiful. And play with headphones. What's wrong with you? Um, <laughs> oh, this is cool. I like how just in the background, I'm, we're just showing off the rest of the uh, things. Oh, I will say on No Man's Sky, I did have some frame rate drops right here, which was not good. Um, I think you can see it in the footage too. But look how sharp that is though. Look how sharp that looks, man. Eye tracking. This this episode is sponsored by eye tracking. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, I think we're almost done here. I got to hurry up here. It's getting really late. Um, next, we've got Suicide Guy VR fuck off game. Uh, we've got Synth Riders. This, by the way, th am I the only one that thinks this guy is completely full of shit saying he sold 10,000 copies? Like this guy did not. This guy is so full of shit. It's not even funny. He didn't sell ten thousand copies of this. You can fuck right off with that. You you show me your show me the receipt. I want a receipt. Otherwise, shut your mouth. <laughs> uh, Synth Riders Complete Edition. Good God, that's expensive. That's on sale. Holy crap, man. Okay, look, I love Synth Riders. <laughs> like I really, really love Synth Riders. Um. <laughs> dude i love synth riders but i ain't about to tell y'all to go out and pay 80 dollars for it <coughs> <coughs> i don't think i don't think i'd tell you to pay 80 dollars for any game um unless it was legendary tales 2 um the expanded version uh go listen go buy synth riders when it's on sale for like 15 dollars. it's amazing and then just add the music packs that you want to it later similar to like drums rock um so hard pass on this one for now. Uh, tennis on court. No, don't really care. Uh, tentacular. Again, I think tentacular does some really good things on a technical level. Um, but uh, I don't, I didn't enjoy it. it. It doesn't matter, you know, how many technical things it does. If it's not fun, it's not fun. Um, uh, so pass for me. Uh, Tetris effect connected, man. Um, again, amazing game. Um, a little hard to recommend at $30, although I probably still would. Um, I think I spent, I spent $40 for it back in the day. Um, and you know, if, if you're in a bad, let me, let me put it this way. If, if you're in a, 
if you're kind of in a bad place mentally and need something to to kind of put a squeegee across your third eye and 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 snap you out of a depression or something give give tetris effect a chance if you're if you're in a tough place right now um and and need to need to open your mind a little bit and just relax um <clears throat> give tetris effect a chance uh it, it's it's a wonderful campaign um i went from basically never playing tetris in my life to completing this on master difficulty and um during covid um this game uh during covid tetris effect really um really helped me out mentally i like when when uh when i was like in a in a rough spot mentally um it really made me feel amazing like the more and more i played it so that's who i would recommend this game to um oh my god macho that is that is so horrible to hear i'm so sorry to hear that um i am so so sorry to hear that macho um <clears throat> uh anyways macho yeah maybe maybe i'll buy you tetris effect <laughs> uh but yeah man um it's uh it's a good game play it with headphones um the seventh guest vr now this is the interesting thing there is a there is a kind of difference between uh i have a comparison to make here the seventh guest and overdark um to me Oh, well, I'm so uh I'm so glad to hear that your dog is okay, Macho. I'm so glad to hear that. You know, I and I, and I wish your dog a um a speedy recovery and, you know, um I'm just so glad to hear that she's okay. Um but uh Okay. What was I saying? Um The seventh guest. Okay. There's the seventh guest and there's the overdark and there's a little bit of a parallel that I, I'd like to draw between the two. The seventh guest is very much for, uh, first of all, if you have nostalgia for the original game, in which that case you probably already have it. If not, um, if you really like sitting there and doing puzzle after puzzle after puzzle after puzzle after puzzle, which is basically what seventh guest is, I actually think it's a really good game. I would give it a thumbs up, um, but I will tell you that I never was able to finish it because it 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 puzzled me out like like it out puzzled me. Um, I just I just couldn't like I, as somebody that uh, doesn't really like uh, going into a room and solving puzzle after puzzle after puzzle after puzzle. Um, as much as I liked it and it and I and I respect the game, um, I just. I just couldn't keep playing it. And for me, that makes it a pass. The cool thing I have liked about Overdark so far, it may not be as polished. It may, um, like, gameplay-wise, and and it may not do, like, some uh, as the same cool things. But the difference is, is that Overdark mixes in some puzzle solving. I'm, I'm sorry, problem solving. And I really like that... Overdark feels kind of like you're going through something versus like puzzle, 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 puzzle. It's kind of like you you're problem solving a little bit. And I and I love I may not like puzzles, but I love problem solving um, and troubleshooting. And, and that's what kind of Overdark feels like to me. It feels like more like a problem solving puzzles, uh, 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 troubleshooting kind of thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, man. Breath Mania, I'm sorry to hear about that too, man. Um, yeah, my 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 dog's getting up there, man. He is he is way past his expiration date, but but he's he's over there. There he is. Uh, but he's 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 still with us, luckily, but barely. <laughs> that's that's about that's him exercising right now. That's about as much exercise as he gets. He's right there. He's he's going for a walk right now. <laughs> Oh man, animals are the best, man. Animal animals are amazing. Um. Anyways, just wanted to point that out. That difference between seventh guest and uh, <laughs> and and overdark, and why I like overdark more. Um. But speaking of puzzle games, uh, the last clockwinder is fourteen ninety nine. Um. 
Ah, oh, man, there's more games on the sale than I thought. This this sale is a little bit more. The order that I put it in is has changed things. Um, uh, Looper, I do agree with you. Uh, the seventh guest, the volumetric motion video cutscenes, they are definitely cool AF. Uh, definitely, one hundred percent with you there. Um, there's a lot of things I like about that game. Um, I just really hate the puzzles over and over. Um, the last Clockwinder, however, now I haven't finished this game, so it's kind of hard to recommend, but I will say, I'm not going to give it really a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I'll just tell you my experience with it so far. I'm a couple hours in. It's, it's, it, it, it is an indie game, but it's a very polished, charming, colorful indie game, uh, with really good puzzles. And I think it's really good. Uh, it's, it's got very, uh, good storytelling with it kind of like it, it seems interesting to me um that being said even though i really liked uh the last Clockwinder a lot i think it's actually a really good game um it's like it's just like one that like i really want to play like years from now when i'm revisiting the library and and stuff it's not one that i need to play right away um it's one that i really want to play later on and um, in the life cycle a little bit. It'll be, a, it'll be a great one to come back to and be like, wow, I can't believe I didn't play this when it came out and, you know, whatever. Um, it's, a, it's a good game. It's, it's a really good game and it looks nice in the headset. Um, I don't think it's a must-have just yet. Um, although, unless you want like a really nice story-driven, colorful puzzle game, then yes, I would recommend it. Um, we've also got the Light Brigade for 1749 or with PlayStation Plus you're looking at 1624 uh I also don't like roguelikes uh but dude the light brigade is literally one of the best hidden gems on PSVR2 um is an amazing atmosphere so the the atmosphere is so amazing in this game it's a roguelike shooter um but it's a good one, uh, and I would highly, highly recommend it. It's, it's again, this and like Song in the Smoke, I think are the probably the two biggest um, hidden gems on the platform. All right, Shades, thank you so much, man. Um, it, yeah, Light Brigade has a lot of t competition, especially like right now with some of these, you know, big budget games coming out. Um, but I'd still recommend it. I absolutely love it. It got its hooks. It, it was a little bit delayed after launch, but then it got its hooks in me and, uh, and I absolutely loved it. All right. I am losing my voice. Um, hopefully we're almost done here. Um, Tale of Onagoro is 2449 or, uh, soundtrack edition for 2834 um to be honest with you i actually kind of liked tale of onagoro uh but uh for that price i do not so that will be getting a pass from me not too bad of a game though um it's it's puzzles it's anime puzzles with guns uh anime gun puzzles something like that um we've got toss uh for 11.99 okay Y'all are going to bust out the pitchforks and the torches, but no, I don't like Toss. I don't think it's very, I like, okay, maybe it's not a bad design game, really. It feels too cheap and mobile gamey. Um, I like Stilt a lot more. Uh, so I would highly recommend Stilt over Toss, although I know some of you are going to be like, I like Toss, that's totally fine. If you want to support Toss or tell people to rec recommend Toss, you know say toss and give a thumbs up in the chat your voice can will be seen or your your opinion will be seen right here in the comment big big blown up on the screen um <laughs> damn it damn it timu timu says i like to toss <laughs> that's not what i asked timu damn it <laughs> uh anyways <clears throat> uh next we've got unplugged air guitar no i don't think this game's very good vertigo 2 for 23.99 or um <clears throat> 22.49 now uh for that price i would absolutely say yes however now that dynamic foveated rendering and stuff is supported 90 90 hertz uh frames per second is supported <clears throat> the only reason I would say to maybe hold off on <clears throat> on uh, Vertigo 2, the only reason, 
is that if it maybe gets like a an eye tracked uh, eye tracking 90 hertz update um that could potentially fix some of the frame rate issues with that game and uh if that does it's going to look stunning that is the only reason i would say to hold off if you don't care about that and don't mind a little bit of like you know frame rate jitteries here and there it's a little bit of performance issues here and there then it is a two thumbs up because that game is like one of the most fun first person shooters i've ever i've played in vr in a very very long time um awesome tatum vertigo 2 is so much fun i had such a blast with it i did have like some complaints about it but by the end of it, I was just like, that was amazing. And, and I absolutely loved it. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, time to play. I know the stream has been going. This is my longest. Uh, this is one of my longest streams I've done yet. So um, I don't I usually try to keep this to like an hour, hour and a half. So uh, long form content. Uh, but I appreciate all of you uh, sticking around. We're almost done here. Um uh, so I would, I would recommend Vertigo 2. Uh, like I said, the only reason, uh, I would say hold off is if you want to wait and see if there is an update for it with the eye tracked foveated rendering in 90 frames per second native. If, if you don't care about that, then go ahead and get it. Speaking of go ahead and get it. VR skater is 1924 or 17. 49 man if you got playstation plus like two thumbs up uh you like um vr skater man is one of my favorite skateboarding games of all time um, i mean uh, granted i didn't play every single skateboarding game that ever came out but i, I played street skater and you probably didn't <laughs> so i'm sure awesome tatum did um <laughs> uh but but no i uh you know i played the tony hawk series and stuff and you know, there's a there's a heavy learning curve. There's a big steep learning curve, which with um, I almost call it Street Skater with VR Skater. But dude, seventeen dollars, man, that is a steal. That is such a high quality game. Um, again, takes practice. It is challenging, um, but it is awesome. Uh, VR Skater is is amazing, and uh, it gets two thumbs up for me. Um, he says it's better than Thrasher Skate and Destroy. I didn't play Thrasher. And I thought you were going to say skate or die because I'm old <laughs> and I loved skate or die. Uh, I, that's probably the extent I put, I probably was more into snowboarding games than I was, um, uh, skateboarding games. Although I did love Tony Hawk one, uh, a lot. And I did play like one through three. Um, but, uh, anyways, uh, let's see here. A big thumbs up for VR skater. Highly, highly recommend, uh, walkabout. Mini golf has all these courses. I pretty much recommend uh, almost all of them. Uh, and then, uh, ooh, I might, I might actually buy this Journey to the Center of the Earth one myself. Um, Waltz of the Wizard. Uh, so there's a lot of games where it's like, hey, I want to, I want to throw a family member into VR. Um, Waltz of the Wizard is very much like a tech demo, uh, but it's a really like fleshed out tech demo that's that's pretty cool and interactive. Um, I think if you're like if you're a VR veteran, it's not going to impress you at all. Or if you want a gaming experience, it's not going to impress you at all. But if you want a little, hey, uh, let me just get into this uh, this game and fuck with some magic and and do a couple things. There's like a couple little game modes and and there's some cool technical things about it. Um, then I actually uh, I'm going to give this the recommendation. I think for the first time, um, and oh my goodness, with with PlayStation Plus, you guys, Waltz of the Wizard is $5. $5 for Waltz of the Wizard. That is like, okay, that is, if it wasn't for Hellsweeper, that might even get the golden buzzer just because it's so cheap and, and it's a really pleasant quality experience for $5. Um, <laughs> Robert, the game cat says, you're calling me old? Well, you're right. Yes, we are all old. <laughs> um... Oh, oh yeah, Waltz of the Wizard is uh, is five dollars. Uh, what do we got? Oh no! Oh, we can't we can't end the show like this. We can't. It can't end like this. Not like this, you guys. <laughs> Not like this. What the bat? Fuck this game. I hate this game so much. This game sucks. Uh, it's terrible. Uh, man.
Why does this game exist? It's like it's like the good dog, bad dog, or uh, what's one of those other shitty games that was on PlayStation VR that we absolutely hate? Um, I don't really go off on a lot of games, but this game pissed me off so much. Like I'm, I usually try to think about like developers' feelings. Well, fuck these developers' feelings. I don't give a shit. This game sucks. It's terrible. Stay far away from it. Do not wish what the bat on your worst enemies. It's terrible. It's so bad. And on that pleasant high note, <laughs> we're going to wrap up the show now. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. Almost got, uh, I guess it's been a while since I've gone on an angry rant like that. It's just what the bat just, it's, it's like literally like the new good dog, bad dog, man. It's, it's terrible. It's like that game. Like every time I hear it mentioned, I like cringe a little, um, my Lordy. What did you, look at how much swearing you made me do with the bat. Shame on you. Shame on you for making me swear. That's not my fault. I'm a good boy. <laughs> oh, I don't cuss that much, really. I don't. But man, that, that game, fuck that game. <laughs> All right, guys. And on that wonderful, pleasant, flowery note, uh, it is time to get out of here. I appreciate y'all so much, man. Uh, man, uh, you know, uh, so thank you all so much for for staying for the for most of the show. I know it's a really really long show for me. Um, I don't usually do shows this long, uh, but man, I guess there was just a lot of cool shit to talk about today. Awesome, awesome updates for Hell Sweeper. Can't wait for Hell Singer. Got a bunch of metal games on the way. I'm loving it. Um, you know, Overdark comes out tomorrow. Uh, so far, I've been I've been liking it. I hope that they deliver on the patches that they promised because otherwise uh that's going to be a problem but if it gets the patches that it's supposed to get we're good um happy about this uh unity update getting the uh dynamic foveated rendering and uh 90 frames per second native support that's really huge i hope to see more uh future games as well as some past games go back and update their games um i wouldn't be surprised if something like uh uh, Light Brigade or something uh, goes back and updates with that. That would be really cool because there were so many developers complaining about Unity uh, not supporting that. So awesome that they uh, did that. Uh, but guys, thank you so much, man. Wow. Uh, it has been an awesome week. And uh, I do have uh, some family in town. So um, I'll do my best to, to, to you know, um, be around this weekend. But I might be a little out of pocket if you guys want me to post uh i do have my first hour of gameplay of overdark with commentary and me on the green screen if if you guys want me to post that to patreon post it to the channel uh let me know and i will if you're interested in it if not then you know you have my my lukewarm recommendation um but yeah man other than that uh i will uh i will uh you know uh, still be working on some things. I'll try to be posting some content, even though I'm going to be a, a little out of pocket. Um, but you guys are amazing. Thank you so much once again to all you lovely Patreon supporters at PSVR, uh, patreon.com slash PSVR Underground. I do have my interview with Legendary Tales uh, director BJ on there posted. Um, and uh, uh, that is... Uh, pretty sweet uh well it's it's you know it's he, he didn't answer as many questions as i wanted him to but um the people seem to like the interview overall so far um and i'm gonna try to post it to the channel later brian has a really cool one uh with him that you should really check out it's funny because he didn't answer any of my questions that really that the answers i was trying to get he answered him with brian's questions but he didn't answer Brian's questions. He answered Brian's questions with the questions, with the answers that I was trying to get from it. It's all just a mess, but it, it's all good. Uh, he was amazing. <laughs> Legendary tales is amazing. Go buy it. Um, and guys, you all have a wonderful night. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful weekend as well. I will promise to, to try and do something, even though I might be tied up seeing my brother uh, who I haven't seen in like a year or two um, and really need to spend some time with him. I haven't seen his, I haven't seen my nieces in like years and I feel like shit for not doing that. So, so I, I might be a little tied up this weekend, but any free time I get, I will work around the schedule. So 
I might be able to do some stuff this weekend, but it won't be the normal times that you expect, if that makes sense. Uh, but I'll do my best to get some streams or something going so that uh, we can have a little fun together this weekend. Because we back, baby. It is time. We back. And uh, there's lots of games coming out. Um, uh, but yeah, man, uh, if I get a chance, I will definitely live stream some Hellsweeper uh, if I get the chance. Um, but yeah, man, you all have a wonderful night. And uh, thank you so much to everybody who was here just hanging out, watching, having a good time um, and uh, engage, uh, you know, joining in the conversation. And thank you to the moderators. Uh, thank you to everyone who's like extremely generous with your donations today. You really have no idea how much that helps. It literally uh, it helps more than, you know. Um, but uh but yeah man i appreciate each and every one of one of you and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your night and i'll see you again till next time we out cue the astro and metal macho 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 uh this is if you find time ever play dd2 what is dd2 i don't know what dd2 is macho i feel like i should though uh, time to play VR. Thank you so much, man. You have a beautiful time. Awesome Tatum says metal. Dude, I cannot wait for Hellsinger. Oh my god, it's gonna be so good. I'm gonna play that shit on like insane difficulty too. That's gonna be so good. Uh, oh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Oh man, I would love to. I still haven't played my favorite game of all time, Final Fantasy 7. I, I just haven't had time, man. There's so many VR games. I haven't even finished all the VR games. Sal, my homie, what is up, dude? Oh, so good to see you. Um, <laughs> oh dude it was, it was amazing meeting you man uh so so good to see you back in here uh latin in the house tonight what up homie um thank you man you as well shapeshifter the amorphous game cats a slayer <laughs> uh dude yeah so so cool silver nexus thank you again my friend scott the psvr game cat for life uh do, 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 head bite uh guys on facebook to you gin 007 license to chill hell yeah this is happy easter uh, AJ and Mad Catters, happy Easter to you, Jin, and everybody uh, who celebrates. I uh, hope you get some, some candy and, and some rabbits and uh, some other Eastery stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, Virtual Strangers West, what up, man? Thanks so much for dropping by tonight. Uh, Leo AI, uh, he said, I'm bored, so post it to watch now, please. Uh, post it, post it, post it, says Robert. All right, y'all. I'm getting out of here. You have a wonderful night. I'll see you again very, very soon. Y'all take it easy. Peace.